live on the first try with absolutely no audio issues for uh, the, uh, it's a very special Friday night tonight. It is a uh, Friday night as previously established. You are on uh, the channel Saving Throw and that means it is time for Wild Cards, which will be our continued exploration of the hallowed and haunted halls of academia using the East Texas University setting and playing in the Savage Worlds Adventure Edition rule set. And that is the last time that I am going to say that because this is our finale. This is it. Um, check my mic input. Why? What's what's up? Uh, seemingly, you're underwater. I'm underwater. Huh? Maybe okay. it's for effect. Last time, it, it picked the wrong microphone. Hey, hold on. We said no audio issues, but we weren't entirely telling the truth. We lied. If you guys can tell, it. we miss having a studio very much. Yes. So <laughs> we would. This <laughs> happened at the studio, though, too. This the first time we had that underwater fan issue happened at the studio. So I don't know what. Do I? I mean, do I still sound weird? It, it should. You be. sound fine. Great. You sound fine. To right? me. Okay. 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 All right. Where were we? Uh getting back from some audio issues, putting everyone back on the screen, and here we are. That is the last time that I am going to say that intro because tonight <laughs> is not just the season finale, but the series finale of Wild Cards ETU. So it has all led up to this, to tonight. And we are very, very glad to have all of you esteemed members of the Alumni Association here with us at the end of it all. My name is Jordan Caves Callerman. I am the Dean of this table. And uh, there are some other fine people here at this table as well. So uh, what I would like to know tonight from all of you, I would like to know your name. I would like to know uh, your character's name. All right, so far so good. I would like a brief log line of uh, your character's physical description. Mm -hmm. And um, I would like to know what you think your odds of surviving uh, the finale are as your character. And I would okay. also like to know what you're going to put on when I say class is in session, if you're already wearing it. Oh, no, never <laughs> mind. Uh, who would like to go first? Wait, what was, the, what was the fourth part after the description? The uh, description? Your name, your character's yep. name, uh -huh, brief physical uh -huh. description, and uh -huh. I want to know what you think your odds are of surviving. Okay, got it. Okay. Uh, I'll go first. go first. I'll go first. Uh, hey, everybody. I'm Garav Gulati, and I play Calvin Everett Jr. Uh, Calvin is now 22 years old. Uh, he is an African-American male, uh, and he is the best stressed person in school, or at least he thinks he is, because he's the coolest guy at school, or so he thinks he is. Um, best. best dressed. Best <laughs> dressed. He was voted best dressed by himself at his frat. Best dressed? Stressed. Best stressed. dressed. Most best stressed. 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 Most, Most stressed, stressed. Best dressed. It's a good award to win. Um, and uh, Calvin thinks his odds of surviving are 1,000%. They've been through way worse through four years, and this convergence, if it even happens, like, whatever, he'll deal with it. He's right. going, he's leaving this town on his own, on his own, you know, like, no, no one's going to send him to the grave before he leaves this town. Sure. And then, um, as, uh, what, what is Garab's estimation of the situation? Uh, also, actually, a thousand percent. A thousand percent. All right. I'm, I'm you think sure. that you'll start the night with one cow and end the night with <laughs> ten fully alive cows. That's what I think. Yes. All right. Place your bets now in the chat, uh, Payne. Um, all right. So we have uh, one person who will soon be ten, Calvin Everett Jr., who would like to go next. I'll go. All right. Hi, everybody. My name is Jordan Pridgen, and I play Joshua Sawyer, the uh, the journalism student. And he uh, he's now 37 years old, I believe. Physically. Uh, yeah, he's physically 37 years old. So, uh, and I, I kind of imagine that it's been like a, a rapid enough aging that it he, he looks not entirely like he normally would at 37. He probably looks like a weirdly aged 21-year-old. Mostly because of, uh, you know, dress and demeanor and uh, inner emotional maturity and all of that kind of stuff. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, but you don't stand out at ETU anymore, Sawyer, because you look like a uh, non-trad student who's trying to fit in <laughs> with the rest of the kids. Yep. Yep. That's that's exactly what's going on. You're there. Steve uh, Buscemi now. With with, with his, his little <laughs> extra five years tacked on last session. 
Um, besides that, he dresses like a bit like a hipster and uh, always kind of looks tired because he doesn't get a lot of sleep and stuff. And he drinks a lot of coffee. And uh, I think Sawyer does not feel like he he feels like it's it's kind of a coin toss whether they'll make it out of this like he doesn't know rituals that well that's really more like Addie's side of things and pretty much every time we've been involved with them except very simple ones it's gone very bad and this seems like something that's like way out of his control and he's even though the app told him to just like do the ritual and that's a way that they could like save everybody even that it was like vague enough that who knows if that was you know, this ritual it was talking about or anything like that. So I, I think Sawyer thinks this is a bit of a Hail Mary, like trying to go in and do this. And he's he's probably 50-50 on whether they're going to make it out. I also think that uh, Sawyer is misremembering what the app said. All right. <laughs> well, that's, that's what I thought it so said. So I'll just, I'll just throw that out there for you. <laughs> um, all right. So we've got Sawyer, who is... Uh, Suddenly, not so sure. Uh, and um, who would like to go next? I can. Hi, my name is Megan Caves, and I play Adelaide Blackwood. Um, Adelaide is a, a damn it, Garav. She <laughs> doesn't do anything. All I can think of now, whenever Jordan asks for descriptions, all I can think of is Mousy. I try to go, I'll get to Mousy. What else is she? It's <laughs> Mousy now. Anyway. <laughs> Um, she has, uh, now this length, uh, medium brown hair with purple in it. She dresses fairly eclectically, although lately she, um, has toned that down a little bit. Um, but she still likes bright colors here and there and all of her, her fun fantasy things. And she's a little bit, um, a little bit slight and mousy, like I said, mousy. Anyway, <laughs> um, uh, log line. And then if we think we'll survive. I'm not missing another thing. Okay. Um, I don't think, I think Adelaide is still a bit in that age range where you don't really think you're ever going to die. Even with all the stuff they've done, and especially because of all the stuff they've done, they've not died yet. Sure. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. She's got it. Statistically. So, right. And that is a complete ridiculous statistic because you can only die once, really, as far as we know. But um, yeah, I just don't think she's thinking about it like that. Having said that, Megan is unsure, though. Megan's like, I don't know if Adelaide's going to make it out of this. We'll see. Okay. All right. And then uh, last but not least, after after will she or won't she Adelaide, we have... Uh <laughs> Hi, my name's Dom Zook, and I play Ron Tagoth Stevens. And Ron Tagoth Stevens is a tall ish, around six foot, blonde, brown hair. Is that a uh, cheat sheet? What's happening? I wrote down everything that we needed to say. Um, <laughs> That's a Captain and... America trading card. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, his, let's see, his strength is high, his wisdom is. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, he is. Uh, he's. Uh, uh, a martial artist of sorts practicing the art of Raz Deslo and he grew up in a commune and um, he let's see odds of surviving um, I think he's yeah. uh, how do he's you rate the chosen son of the Rontagathians he's he's <laughs> relatively optimistic because uh, that's kind of how Ron runs but he is also he's prepared to do whatever it takes to to help the most people I would say. Okay. But so, so I guess, yeah, he feels his odds of surviving might be low, but <laughs> he's hoping that that will improve other people's odds of surviving. All right. Well, thank you all very much for that, that one final answer. Um, and again, thank you very much to all of you in the Alumni Association for being here. Now, uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, because you missed it when I said it about five or six minutes ago. Uh, we are Saving Throw, the channel, and this is Wild Cards, the show. And as a group, uh, Saving Throw exists by and large because of the support of viewers very much like you. So if you are enjoying what you're seeing, if you're having a good time, 
and you want to uh, support us and continue to help us make Saving Throw uh, the channel and all of the shows on Saving Throw bigger and better for the future, please do consider tipping during the show. It means a lot to us and it does help us keep the rent for the studio paid when and if we are allowed to return to the studio. But <laughs> uh, ordinarily here on Wild Cards, uh, when you tip, cash tips or bit tiers over 100 bits, those go towards unlocking reward tiers, which can have effects on the game or the campaign, but not tonight. Uh, tonight, I, uh, I just left a message for you all in the Alumni Association, uh, but there are no tiers to be unlocked. There are no, uh, no levels to be reached. There is merely uh, the end, and that is where we are at. So you can still uh, buy a shots. You can still sub, resub, or gift subs. Uh, in order to give points of extra credit to the table, but your last care package has already been delivered at the end of last session. You all unlocked one last care package, and that is what they will have tonight. So we do very much appreciate your support. I do ask if uh, if you've ever gotten any enjoyment out of uh, our adventures here, please do consider tipping if for no other reason than to show your support for the fine uh, the fine work that all of my players here at the table have done, that Dom has done behind the scenes, and the work this that we guy. put in week after week in order to bring this stuff to you. Um, but even if you can't tip or you simply don't want to, that is also fine. Please do spread the word about the show. It is our finale, but that doesn't mean that Wild Cards is going to end, so you can use the hash card, hashtag WildCardsRPG on your favorite social media network. Tag us on Instagram at WildCardsRPG. And hopefully soon, once Twitter realizes we are not a three-year-old, you can tag us in the same way on Twitter. Um, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Goo goo gaga. I would also like to say a big thank you to our friends over at Norse Foundry, makers of a fine, fine high-quality metal dice that roll really, really nicely, and other uh, various gaming accessories and accoutrements for your table. You can see some of their work in the upcoming Deadlands Kickstarter, which we'll get to in just a moment. But... If you want to see what they have for you in their shop, you can enter exclamation mark Norse in the chat panel and follow the link to that. Uh, be sure and use the promo code Saving Throw Show when you check out to save 10% off your order. Deadlands Kickstarter. I said something about that. Yes, that's still happening right now. Uh, it is in its final days. For those of you who don't know, Deadlands is a fantastic setting for the Savage Worlds uh, RPG, and uh, it is... One that is very near and dear to our hearts is that is what the entire first campaign of Wild Cards was played in. Deadlands, the Weird West, the Kickstarter is blowing it out of the water. There are a crap load of really awesome unlocks that you get with most every reward tier. And uh, like I said, you definitely want to snatch this up because they do not offer these things from Pinnacle at this price point after the Kickstarter concludes. So if you're at all interested in the Weird West, check that out. You can enter exclamation mark Kickstarter in the chat. Yeah. Window and follow the link. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. you can uh, to give them a look. And then also on Sunday, this coming Sunday, in just a couple days at 6 p.m. Pacific time, we will doing we will be doing the second part of our Deadlands game using the new setting rules to show off uh, what you can expect from the Kickstarter. We did part one last Sunday, part two this Sunday. So we have a finale tonight and a finale on Sunday as well. It's a weekend of endings for us, and we are here for it is there anything else that we need to cover up top dump uh um no right. well maybe one thing okay one thing uh that i want to i want to say right now it is uh he who wants jeans's birthday tomorrow oh. and, uh, uh shauna wanted you to have a happy birthday so we are wishing you a happy birthday Happy birthday. Happy birthday! Happy birthday! He wants, he wants what, a, what a great day for a birthday! And I, yeah, I hope I hope that Shauna gets you jeans. Um, but at the very least, uh, she did get you a birthday shout out. So uh, yeah, <laughs> that's pretty cool. Can't help with the jeans. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry. Um, that one you're gonna have to handle on your own. So happy birthday to he who wants jeans. And with that having been said, students, class is in session. Yeah, see, I did. I had the glasses off by the time it was important, so it all worked out. Fantastic. <laughs> all right, let's hand out some bennies for all of you. Uh, unless I am much mistaken, there is nothing that modifies bennies at this point for anyone, so that's going to be three bennies for each of you, yes? Correcto mundo. All right, then Ron to Goth Stevens. Mm -hmm. Three bennies for you. Oh, I got him. Calvin Everett Jr., one, two, three. Count them, coming at you. All right, there thank you. There you go, you grab those. Got uh, it. All right. Uh, Adelaide Blackwood, one, two, three. There you go. 
Thank you. Great. And uh, nice, nice effect there. I liked that touch. Right. And uh, Joshua Sawyer, one, two, three for you as well. Here we go. Wow. Right through the computer screen like Mike TV. And uh, last but not least, I get one for each of you. So that's one, two, three, four bennies going into my GM pile. Oh my. And also, Adelaide, what do you say we draw a curse for you? Yay! Last, last curse, last curse, curse, last curse, last curse. I mean, she gets Adelaide. a. She had a curse last time, and we're just continuing the episode. So it's by session, not by oh. not by in game day. Cool. Adelaide, ready? Yeah. Tell me when to stop. Stop. Adelaide, you got a jack of spades. Yeah. Let's pull up the old curse table 2.0 here. Oh no, Adelaide, Jack. Technology completely fails this session. Oh. See the anti-technology hindrance. If right. the character already has that hindrance, subtract one from any result on the anti-tech table. Uh, so Adelaide, yeah. anytime you use technology tonight yeah. is a potential that uh, it could go catastrophically wrong. And since we are not at the studio and we don't have all of our various different bits in front of us, let me just go ahead and Okay. Bookmark the anti-tech table here, because I have a feeling, uh, this being the modern era and all, that we might have to uh, draw on that at some point. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's possible. Uh, we're we're going to find out this whole ritual is just like using computers for crazy <laughs> stuff. All right, oh, so we've got that figured out here. Um, let's talk about what happened last time on Wild Cards. Last time, uh, it was graduation day. Everyone was in town, your families, uh, you all had an awkward brunch together. Uh, you got the chance to, to be normal in the relative quiet that happened after your raid on the Sweetheart Foundation Superhuman Project, but that turned out to just be the quiet before the storm. Your research into the ley lines had revealed that the point of convergence seems to be over the football stadium, and Jackson's research had found that there was an abandoned super collider project beneath the stadium itself. Unable to find out more, Jackson decided it was time for all of you to confront Glenn Mack, which you did. And he explained that Sweetheart was not trying to usher in the convergence, but to stop it. However, in order to do so, a ritual is planned that will use the life force of all of the living people who have come to ETU's graduation to fuel a great magical burst that would push the ley lines apart once and for all. And despite his wavering convictions, the four of you, plus Jackson, were unable to convince Glenn Mack that there was another way. And as a result of that, Jackson was forced, well, Jackson decided to knock him unconscious and steal the key that he had told you about that would get you down to the secret room. So you made your way over to the stadium where you found out that all of the, all of the people who had shown up for graduation are ensnared and ensorcelled by some sort of strange music coming out of the speakers uh, to stay in place at that point you lost Jackson to that music and almost could have gotten ensnared yourselves, but you made your way to the alumni elevator. You used the secret key to go down, down far into the earth where you found an active Sweetheart Foundation office where they were apparently planning a very big ritual. You dispatched the cultists, but before things could get really ugly with some mercenaries with automatic weapons, Helen Lane, Glenn Mack's girlfriend, otherwise known as Helen LaCroix, one of the original Pine Box protectors from way back in the day, revealed herself to you and just wanted to talk. Filled you in on what was happening. Uh, the convergence would weaken the barrier between worlds and allow an army of the damned to pour over and destroy our planet unless her ritual was able to see itself through completion. And that would require at this point, all of you going along with it. You decided, since you could not argue and convince her that there was another way, you decided to go along with this and see if there was some way that you could maybe convert or corrupt this ritual to your own ends and make it not quite as deadly. As you were thinking that, the air above the football stadium began to ripple like a heat mirage and warnings went off in the bunker that you were all in saying the convergence had accelerated, the timetable had changed and the convergence was here, estimated one hour until full convergence. And that's where we left off last time, 
But before we get to any of that, uh, it looks like some people have bought us some shots. Ooh. Oh boy! Yay. Oh boy! Let's have people thinking. bought us some shots? Yeah, Everyone go, raise... go go through these slowly because they keep coming. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh boy! Everyone Thank you, everybody. raise up your red solo cups or homemade equivalent. Fox Wise has bought us a shot. This is a drive-by tip. My sister introduced me to wild cards recently, but I'm only up to sophomore year, so I'll have to skip watching live tonight. Aww. Good luck, and I look forward to watching this session in a week or two. Yay! <laughs> wow. Bob wow. And Chuck! Chuck. Uh, Thank cool you very much, Chuck. Foxwise. Welcome to the fold, and good luck to you as you make your way through uh, those many episodes. Yeah. Wow. Good SF to you. Giants 49er bought us a shot. Looking forward to a great finale with friends in the audience, great players, and a cool Marsha uh, Dean. <laughs> Raise them up and chug. Yeah. Thank you very much, SF Giants 49er. When was the last time I get to say Dean Aline? Escape Box mm. Games bought us a shot. Hello at Twitter support. As you can see, we are not adolescent children sitting around a table <laughs> playing board games. We are adults <laughs> pretending to be adolescent adults in a tabletop role playing game. Uh, Raise them up yes. and chug. Yes. Thank you, Very yes. Much escape Twitter support. Fans. Twitter's fans, so they just think that we're young. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, Twitter has a hard time differentiating fantasy from reality. Escape box <laughs> games get to the same they thing do. happened to them. Oh, Simi geez. David 95 bought us a shot. Thank you all for this incredible journey you have taken us on. Now, if there's anyone I would trust to save the world, it's this study group right here. Best of luck. I believe in you. Raise them up Yay. and chug. chug. Thanks very much, Simi David. Your optimism is refreshing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Brithland bought us a shot. Wayland Yutani's latest androids aren't the best at passing for human, it seems. Raise them up and chug. chug. Thank you very much, Brithland. Uh, Bimmy Juffet bought us a shot. Bimmy Juffet. Bye. Raise them up and <laughs> chug. chug. I remember Thanks your very high. Much, Bimmy Jeffett. That's ominous as fuck. Well, some, some that's class. why he said hi. Some classic he did, uh, but that just makes me think of Powers Booth and Tombstone. Uh, Wasted away Dom again just in Margaritaville. Uh, BSB Care bought us a shot. This is the end, beautiful friend. This is the end, my only friend. The end oh. of our elaborate plans. The end of everything that stands. The end, no safety or surprise. The end. I'll never look into your eyes again. Raise them up nice. and chug. 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 Thanks oh. very much, BSB wow. Care. Here we go. This is Terrible H's shot. Terrible H bought us a shot. Thanks for an amazing series. Go Ravens. Caw -caw. <laughs> Raise them up and chug. 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 Thanks very much, Terrible is H. Is it Terrible H or Terrible? I'm pretty sure it's Terrible or H. Terrible. At least terrible. as written here. Uh, DHR Dog Carl bought us a shot. Congrats hey. on a great campaign. Raise them up and chug. chug. Uh, thank, thank you very you much, uh, Carl. Congrats on uh, doing some kick-ass layouts for that new Deadlands book. Oh yeah, it's looking yeah. real spicy. Really good. Heart of Handprints bought us a shot. Thanks for taking us along with you on this journey. I'm excited to see how you and your college experience, how you end your college experience. Raise them up and chug. 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 Thank you very much, Heart of Handprints. Me too. Griffin of Falcon Hollow bought us a shot. To the end of an amazing era. Let's go out in style. Raise them up and chug. Uh, Thanks very much, Griffin of Falcon Hollow. Kdrak bought us a shot. What will we do without Josh, Addy, Calvin, Ron, and the Dean? Another amazing campaign from a great group of players. Raise them up Aww. and chug. chug. Thanks very much, Kdrak. But uh, you haven't seen it end yet, so maybe maybe hold on to, uh, <laughs> to your comments. Butcher Pete 98 bought us a shot. A toast. Dice gods, no one, not even you will remember if the study group were good or bad, why they fought or how they died. All that matters is few stood against many, so grant one request. Grant them revenge. If you do not listen, then to hell with you. Raise them up. <laughs> Oh. And chug. chug! Thank you, Butcher Pete 98. Uh, I feel appropriately inspired. Gina PDX bought us a shot. Thank you all for getting us through these tough times. Fridays have been the highlight of my week. You are all the best. Raise them up. Yay. And chug. Chug. Thank chug. you, Gina PDX. We're glad we could help in some small way. 
Artemis 2814 bought us a shot. A toast to the best study group. Good luck tonight. Raise them up and chuck. 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 Thank yeah. you, Artemis 2814. And Thrithland bought us a shot. I'm sorry for making the robot joke. Hopefully the apology will keep the audio problems away. <laughs> Raise them up and chuck. chuck. Thanks, Thrifland. We'll, we'll see. We did all turn into robots again after that, so. Ooh. Yeah. Okay, and then uh, it appears, oh, oh my. Uh, we've got some points of extra credit to hand out. Uh, it seems like some people uh, might be a little concerned for you all here. Um, yeah. I mean, I feel like after last week, that might not be like a misguided concern. Evil Dice Monkey would like to give one point of extra credit to the players. Yay! It's a me. Yes. Me Bondo would like to give two points of extra credit to me to Dean. Dean Aline, baby. Dean Aline. Pogo Mojo would like to give one point of extra credit to the players. Yay! Foxwise would like to give one point of extra credit to the players. Yay! Yay. Artemis 2814 would like to give a point of extra credit to the players. Oh, yay! Thicker Book would like to give one point of extra credit to the players. Oh, yay! Sweet. The T Boys would like to give one point of extra credit to the players. Oh, yay. Yay. Chem 13 Freak would like to give one point of extra credit to the players. Oh. Yay. Sam Burke would like to give one point of extra credit to the players. Okay. Yay. Are you worried about them or something? Get, get some Smokebeard. Some Smokebeard would like to give one point of extra credit to the players. Oh, yay. yay. Nose Tack 159 would like to give one point of extra credit to the players. Woo. Yay. Oops, Kevin held what? Tall. We'd like to give one point of extra credit to the players. Oh, Ooh, yay. so full. Philly cheesesteak would like to give one point of extra credit to the players. Yay! Oh, Empire 54 would like to give four points of extra credit to the players. Whoa. Whoa. I like the way so this is going tonight. Uh, Peter Buxton yeah. would like to give one point of extra credit to me, the Dean. Dean Lee! We did it! Savage Combo Clint breaker. would like to give one point of extra credit to the players. Okay. Yay. Yay. Thank Escape you, Fox you. Games, I think we are still waiting to hear who you would like to give your point of extra credit to, so let us know in chat. Uh, the little listen bun <laughs> would like to give two points of extra credit to the players. Yay! Yay. Thank, you. Thank you. Great Sage <laughs> Under Heaven would like to give one point of extra credit to the players. Yay! Woo. Thank you. Kdrak would like to give one, two points, not one, but two points of extra credit to me, the team. Dean Lee. Mm -hmm. uh, that mm -hmm. ginger one would like to give one point of extra credit to the players. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Peg Presto would like to give one point of extra credit to me, the Dean. Dean Lee. Uh, Dean Thank you very much for that. Uh, BSB Care would like to give one point of extra credit to me, the Dean. Dean Lee. Woo. Thanks, BSB. OFS Chem would like to give one point of extra credit to the players. Thank there you. Arquin 101 would like to give one point of extra credit to me, the Dean. Dean Lean. Dean Lean. Local Shrimp would like to give one point of extra credit to the players. Yay! Yay! Thank Monstrosity you. Jones would like to give two points of extra credit to the players. Okay. Yay! No more. Fetlock Gaming would like to give one point of extra credit to the players. Oh, yeah! yeah. yeah. No Knight no. of Foltis would like to give one point of extra credit to the players. <gasps> yes, yes, yes. That's us! Puma Man Redux would like to give one point of extra credit to the players. Yay. Oh. We already have extra credits. We Alberto Malachi yeah. would like to give one point of extra credit to the players. Oh, so we have so many. Uh, Wolf Borg 05 would like to give one point of extra credit to the players. Okay. Sweet. I already have uh, some. Relative D Pod would like to give one point of extra credit to me, the Dean. Dean Lee, mm. thank you. And DJ Regular mm. would like to give one point of extra credit to me, the Dean. Dean Lee, thanks, DJ. Uh, All right. And then Dean let's Club. go back up. It looks like some things happen here. Uh, escape box games. We're still waiting uh, to see. That's going to you. That's yeah! going to me. Escape box games to me, the dean. Thank dean you very Lee. much. Okay, I think that is all the points of extra credit. So I'm just going to go ahead Ever. and delete those. Delete. I there. mean, I mean, we can only use one per roll, per reroll. So you know, man, I, will I use don't none per reroll. I don't know <laughs> what you guys are doing, um, but you should not turn down extra credit. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm I don't the same it. thing. I don't understand the the, the pro dean thing because because uh, we've run out and we, we keep almost dying. And no. the dean does not need them. I don't even need them. You guys can have them. them this session. You can you Famous can have them. Just words. spread them among yourselves. Okay. Whatever. Okay. He instantly dies. I'm fine with that. <laughs> if, Rob, if you want to never use extra credit, that's I'm fine. I'm done. I'm done. Extra credit is so last year. I'm done with it. Raise your yeah. red solo cups. Oh, okay. 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 Etu Sir Cat bought us a shot. Happy ending. Sad it's over, but glad it happened. Love <laughs> you all. 
Oh. Raise him up and chug. Chug. Oh, chug. Thank, Thank you very much, ETU Sir Cat. And Fractured Avatar would like to give one point of extra credit to the players. Thank you. Hey, that's us. Yeah. And before it gets too out, Wild Cards is not ending. Yes, we said series <laughs> finale, but when we meet Go ETU, on. the series <clears throat> is ending. Wild Cards yes. will continue. Wild Cards will return, but hey. Cap, get rid of us. Guys, <laughs> we have extra credit. We have our shots. There's one more thing that I need to give you all before we go into tonight's session. And that is that last care package from the Alumni Association. Ooh, I hope it's candy. So I like candy. Yeah. As, it, as it floats down uh, symbolically, of course, from the allegorical sky, uh, and you open the uh, metaphorical care package, you all receive the following rewards. Ooh. One Benny for each of you from Whoa! the Alumni Association. Yay! Yay! One draw. Yay! I'm confused. Me. What kind of draw? Draw. <laughs> draw. A this kind draw. of draw. This kind of draw. <laughs> Ron Tegas Stevens. Yeah. Draw. Tell me when to stop. Hey. Stop. Ron Tegas Stevens, you drew extra effort. Play to add 1d6 to any trait roll. This roll may ace. A good one. That's a good one. Good. That is a good one. Uh, that's a, a nice catch-all one. And conviction of youth, basically. It is kind yeah, of like the conviction yeah. of youth, which also came in the care package. Oh, one conviction oh. of youth. Give it to Ron too. <laughs> it does go to Ron. Yeah! Hey! Ron, Ron Stevens, you have the extra effort card. You also have the conviction of youth. A second okay. D six you can add to yes. any one die roll made during this session. Okay. And one shot the boss. Uh, two more things in that care package. The cheat token, okay. which you can use to get a hint okay. or a clue from me about what's going on or failing that as a table Benny, usable by anyone. And the last reward in your care package, all red twos are jokers this <gasps> game. Ooh. Whoa. Ooh, spicy. Double jokers. It's a classic. OK. That's right. great. That's very good. You have your rewards. Are you ready? Yes. 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 Okay. Then let's jump back in to the underground bunker beneath the football stadium where the four of you stand uh, at only loosely at gunpoint and look at a security monitor of the stadium above and the air above it just rippling like a heat mirage. And Helen Lane stands in front of the monitors. Oh shit. And she just turns and just strides through the door that she came into this room through and leaves the four of you behind. What's, uh, what's so what shit mean? What's that? What Did just, just happened? Uh, can I go look at what she was looking at? You were. Uh, what you were looking at was the security monitor uh, of the stadium. Okay. As the air rippled above it and the alarm sounded, the convergence is happening now, not three days from now, now in one hour. Uh, okay. Can I, can I ask a uh, 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 out of character question? Yeah. So clearly, uh, I've forgotten to an extent. But the response. Do you remember the exact response Sawyer got in his app question? Because I thought it was just do the ritual. It was agree to do the ritual. Agree to do the ritual. Okay. Oh. Okay. Okay. All right. What do you want to do? I would uh, try to follow her? The four mercenaries are just standing there like with their guns sort of muzzled at the ground, like looking around, not sure what's going on either. Uh, we sh should probably see what she's concerned about, right? Yeah, yeah. We, yeah. we can't just stay here. We, we've got to go and do something. Yeah, okay. So okay. we follow her if we can. You guys go through that door and you find yourself in another large chamber. Uh, on the floor here, there is a giant pentagram painted in something wet and sticky and tacky uh, and dark. You are not sure what it is and you don't want to guess. There are candles arranged around it, but feeding into the pentagram are large thick wires that run off down the central corridor in front of you. This is an underground super collider. So there are just tunnels that go out in every direction into darkness, but 
directly in front of the pentagram that you find yourselves arranged around. Wires run further back into the darkness, and Helen is standing there at the pentagram, just muttering and walking around and pacing to herself. It's not, it's not, it's not right? What's um, happening, Helen? Tell us what's going shut on. Shut up, shut up, shut up! I'm thinking, I'm thinking! It's not going, it's not going to work. It's not, it's not, it's not enough. There's not enough time. There's not enough time. Uh, okay, is it like a plan B or some shit we can think of? Or? There is no plan B. Are you, you foolish, foolish children? Plan B was the army that you all destroyed. All right, okay, think, think, Helen, think. There's got to be something. There's got to be something. And as she is standing there pacing around, just, just, just furiously muttering to herself and, and all but beating herself about the head in frustration. She passes by you, Adelaide, and her eye stops on the locket hanging around your neck, the locket that belonged to Jack, her boyfriend from back in college, way back in the day, in another life. And she stops again as she sees it. Wait, 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 wait. Convergence is happening now. The barrier is thinning. Yes, no, possibly, possibly, possibly. What? Okay, possibly, okay what? Possibly. Be another, there might be another way. All right. There might be another way. Okay, what is yeah. it? Okay. She starts, she, she just kind of fumbles in her pocket and pulls out a piece of chalk and just walks over to a, a wall, a blank slate concrete wall and starts furiously chalking what looked like a, some strange mixture of arcane symbols and technological uh, uh, symbols as well. Some strange language that none of you can make any hide or hair of. Yes. Yes, okay, all right. Listen, I think, I think with the convergence weakening the barriers between dimensions, it might be possible if I focused that I could rip open a small hole here to the other side, big enough that, well, that a few of you might be able to go through. For what purpose? To see what it is that is causing the convergence from the other end and stop it. Oh god, this is like Minecraft. What? Okay. How is this like a children's block game? What are you talking about? Like, no, whenever you go, never mind. There's no time! You, you this is no time for jokes! This is no time no, for pop culture it, references! It's not a joke! It, it helps me understand things! Ah. All right, okay. listen. If the convergence is about to happen in, in one hour, by our estimates, uh, less now, I may have enough energy to keep the portal open that entire time. I may, but I can't guarantee anything this this could be a one-way trip all right look what do we need to do i don't know i can open the doorway but that's all i can do what you do on the other side well if if any people on god's green earth can stumble into some way of throwing a plan into the machinations of whatever is on the other side of this convergence, then I would wager it's the four of you. Okay. We've kind of uh, stumbled our way through everything so far. No, that's weirdly like a compliment that I kind of appreciate. So. It was not intended as such, but you are all we have. There is an army of demons reanimated from the burn that are marching this way. I suspect the Convergence has sped up because they know what we were trying to do. Now, either those demons come and kill all the people in the stands, or or I radio my ritualists and tell them to give it their best shot anyways. They won't have me, and they don't have an ideal situation, but it would be one final gambit. So, if you really oh. don't want all of these people to die, I suggest you figure it out. If we go through this portal and we're able to stop it, our families would survive? You wouldn't sacrifice them? There would be no need, Adelaide. If you can stop the convergence from the other side, then, then, then the sacrifice would be, would be useless. Then, then I, th I think it's worth giving a shot, we no matter to, what. We yeah. have to do it. Hell yeah. Yeah, let's do it. Let's get in there. It, it, right. it, is there like a, a something like a ritual or something we can do to like blow it up from the other side? Do you know of anything that would be powerful blow enough to stop this? The the portal. We don't know what it is. We don't know what's over. It's not like we've been there. You you don't seem to understand the desperation of this maneuver. I don't know what I would be sending you into. I can't guarantee that you would even survive, and I can't guarantee that you can come back. All right. But I'm telling you. I don't even think, 
Even our ritual doesn't have the space and the time it needs. So this is all we've got. Okay. We'll make do. We'll Let's get do it, it done. Okay. All right. Just, um, I don't know, everyone, this might seem silly, but uh, maybe we should like just really quick write like any last words we want to say to our families just in case and then no 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 no, no. we're can... gonna we're gonna get in that portal knock out whatever this thing is and be back in 30 minutes tops like calvin easy addy's right no no we look we it's gonna take right. you a moment to get the portal open right yes just yes moments but i i'm afraid i, I must agree with calvin that if you are not successful there won't be anyone to read your last words. Well, I don't, I don't care, because I won't know that if I don't make it, and it would make me feel better. All right, well, if we, we got a minute. Let's do like a video or some shit. Like, do what you must. To... Make your final preparations. I'm going to see if I can even do this thing. And she moves into the middle of the pentagram and and takes a seat and just sort of settles herself in and closes her eyes and begins to focus. And as she does. All at once, the candles arranged around the edges of the pentagram burst to life and flare with flame before dying down to a normal candle flame. And she begins to chant and focus. What do you all want to do? What final preparations do you want to make? I mean, I think Adelaide would just kind of write like a note to her parents and just anybody, family, things, friends like that, and just kind of say, I, I love you. I I'm just trying to help. Um, you know, if, if I don't come back or you never see me again, just know that everything's okay. Please, please go on without me. Uh, everyone can have these things. Like she's just kind of rambling, writing stuff down a, just in case. A stream of consciousness, last will and testament, it sounds like. Yeah, basically. All right, the rest of you? Hey, uh, so I, I think Sawyer turns like, mo he, he writes a little bit out, but he, that's that's not as much his style like writing a, a bunch of stuff like that so he just he sort of turns to the rest of the group and it's just like hey guys i just want to say if we go into this place and we all just like die immediately and things don't work out or some of us don't make it out look you guys have been the best friends i could have asked for going into college and i know that we were sort of i don't know even forced into it just from all this stuff but but i i i love all of you and I don't know if any of us can make it out. Let's not, let's do that. If, if I end up being left behind or, or something, and I, I don't wanna like, I'm not saying like it's a self-sacrifice thing, but like if any of us can make it out, I think all of us would want them to, right? Right? What, you mean like one, just one of us? Is that I'm what you're saying? just saying, I don't want us to get in there and, and have one person like end up with their leg trapped under something and everyone go down with the ship. If any of us can survive, we're, you, you should. Get out and tell people what happened and, and just try and not let this just get covered up like everything else. I don't know how much power we have over that, no matter what we do. I'd rather try to save the people in my immediate life, to be honest. I'm just saying, I want as many of you to survive as possible. Even if some things don't work out exactly like we wanted it to. And if any of you survive and things go back to sort of normal and like, let's say I didn't, then I would really appreciate it if like one of you would just like get trashed and make a scene at Laura Lee's wedding. Right? Just oh, at some point. Oh, oh, oh. Is that too much to ask? Because See, uh, that's I, why we, we you hear Helen that. grunt in frustration from the middle of the pentagram as she continues to murmur under her breath. That's why we can't die. So we got a wedding to go to tomorrow. One with I would not miss for the world, man. Oh, oh I can't yeah. wait to see that goddamn wedding. Oh man. Oh, oh shit. Uh we, we left our guns in the previous room, right? Because they made us drop them. Uh, yes, they did make you, make you put down your, your weapons. In the so I'm going to run room. back and get my gun. And while I'm, while I'm in that room, are those guys still there? Uh, yeah, they're, they're now uh, kind of like milling around and, and, and trying to, to help the, the scientists or the cultists that you left alive uh, get, get back up. Um, okay. 
So I want to go back and grab my gun off the floor if it's still there and be like, I'm going to, I'm going to need this where I'm going. Uh, hey, by the way, I'm, I'm going in that uh, Vortex, Portal Vortex thing. You mind if I get one of those uh, semi machine guns? Cause like, this is a, this is cool, but like, that's way cooler. And I can really use it in there, man. Like, who do you think's going to be watching your ass out here on this side? Yeah, that's cool, but like you don't need like four of them. Let me just get one. That's all I'm asking for one, man. I'm trying to save the world up here. I don't know if you can count or not, kid, but there were six of us that went up to fight that thing, and there were four of us that came back. So I've already lost two of my men to one of these things. So if it's all right with you, I think we'll keep our weapons so that you can go do your little whatever occult bullshit, and we'll be here fighting the actual enemy. Y'all didn't pick up those extra guns when they went down. I'm, I'm gone. I'm gone. It's, it's fine. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back. Just good, good luck out here, and we'll do our thing. You do your thing, all right? I'm going to go back into the main chamber. Okay. Uh, anything you need to do, Ron? Um, once everyone is back in the room, uh, I, I'm just going to reach out and put my hands on their shoulders and try and push everyone kind of together into an awkward hug. Oh, all right. Well, and well, uh, you, come on, you guys, and... you guys, you're all I have. And if this means that we go down together, then that's what it means. But I'm going to do everything that I can to keep you alive and to help our families because your families are my families. So be strong, stay next to me and we'll get through this. Thanks, Ron. Amen. Yeah, yeah thanks. Yeah, man. All right. So with your preparations in order, one final time, let's run down what you have that you're bringing with you. Adelaide. Um, well, I assume, Grov or Calvin, when you went in there, you got all of our guns? Correct. Yes. So that, uh, the, my taser, um, uh, the, the locket, uh, mace, I think that's it. I didn't bring the cats because they weren't liking me whenever we left. <laughs> all right. So no, uh, no locks to help you, Adelaide. No, I have a flashlight and a first aid kit and a cell phone. Useful things. Calvin, what do you have? Uh, taser, handgun, skateboard. It's on my sheet, oh so my I feel like I've brought have a skateboard. it. I also have a 10 speed bicycle on my sheet. I'm, I definitely have, have brought it. <laughs> I also have a desktop computer, but I didn't think I had it. With I have binoculars on my sheet and I don't have those. Okay, well, I brought those two things, um, and I don't think I have anything else. So a gun and a skateboard. Got my it. phone, phone, <laughs> wallet, yada yada, keys. Phone, wallet, keys, gun, skateboard. Okay, um, I can't believe you actually have a skateboard. Uh, <laughs> Sawyer, I've got my lighter. I've got my taser, and um, you know, pen and notebook, as usual. And then if, if there was anything like in the room that just could serve as a whacking weapon, I'd probably grab it. I mean, unless you want to rip a wall mounted phone uh, off of its cradle and take that with you, there's really not much down here. Nothing solid, okay. Um, all right, and Ron? This and this. So Left and right. Old lefty and righty. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so from this point on, the answer yeah. to do I have this thing that was not listed just now is no. Even if we use Benny's? Or maybe. Uh, you can use Benny's. <laughs> okay, I'm just cool. saying there, there's no wiggle room. God, that's uh, where it's all I wanted. And before we continue on, one final shot to brace us. John Rober bought us a shot. So the, the end of the college movie. This is when things break out into a sudden party. Our group gets drunk with the chupacabras. A mascot unmasks as a healthy Lauren. And someone shoves an outraged Helen comically into a pool. Can you, like, leak yeah. the notes? And or... chug. chug. <laughs> Thank you very much, John Robert. Don't read my notebook. 
And then finally, for all of you, Terry Ray, Terry Ray, 22, would like to give one point of extra credit to the players. Yeah. Hey. Thank you. Kawagaris would like to give one point of extra credit to the players. That's us. Yay. Nightsteed would like to give one point of extra credit to the players. Yay. And Thantos80 would like to give four pieces of extra credit to me. The D. Oh. Due to lead betrayal. That evens it up. That's pretty cool. All right, folks. <sighs> Helen is sitting on the ground uh, and her murmuring is continuing while you are all getting your preparations together. And then as you finish up, and Ron releases you all from the awkward hug. Her chanting stops. All right, I'm prepared. Do any of you need any healing or anything? Uh, no, we all right. I, I think I mean, we're okay. I mean, if you've got some like protection thing or something like that, yeah. that might help. Could I, I do? Could I do the uh, the uh, tea ritual? You want to do the tea ritual? Yeah. Um. Yes, you could do the tea ritual. Really, we'll we'll say that was part of uh, your. <sighs> <laughs> do you have the components for it? Uh oh. What? Did she say she did? Uh, I didn't Three hear minutes it. ago. Oh, no. It's all in the gun, right? The components are all in the gun. It's a ritual we've, gun. We've literally never used it, but doesn't Adelaide always have components because- Is this the one, I think this is the one that's one jar of human saliva and dry, dried garlic cloves? No, that must be a different one. I, I, all I remember, oh, rattlesnake rattle and 12 ounces of beach sand. Okay. I mean, if this is a ritual that A, the components are that easy to get, especially in this area, and two, is that helpful? She would probably always keep it on her after they found it. After they found the ritual. You would always keep a rattlesnake rattle and 12 ounces of beach sand <laughs> on your person? Yes, this is ETU. <laughs> I think she might. I don't- And it's I don't, Adelaide. I, I, Listen, I don't, that, you know just that give him a Benny, that. just give him a Benny. It's worth it. You also She's have budging. No one's budging. That is. You know, had you not said anything, Garage? <laughs> oh, come I on. Keep all of my pennies. Oh, whatever. Yeah. You're no, spending a penny? I know how Jordan works. Yeah, I'll spend a minute. To save all your asses. Thank you. I, we appreciate I'm it. I'm going under the bus. <laughs> well, then, if there's nothing else, then I'll send you through. Yes. Oh, uh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. We were just kind of zoning out about the whole horrific apocalypse thing. So. Yeah, no, cool, we're ready, yeah. Adelaide's not gonna cast a ritual. Oh, oh right, yeah. yeah. Sorry, I, <laughs> yeah, I was just like, getting <laughs> on you for something. Um, she's, she's ready to send you all through the portal. Where are you, ritual? Occult, occult. Um, get the right die. Okay. All right, I was gonna make uh, it a social seven. conflict thing, but you're you're already doing it. So let's let's keep going. What's what's the role? A seven. Seven. Okay. Oh, uh, a social conflict. I'm sorry. It's okay. Um, you have to do. This is a dramatic task, though, for a ritual. So you can't just make a roll to to do it. Right. So, I got. I got. I, I thought you wanted me to roll dice. I got confused. No, sorry. I I I, I thought you were going to say that you wanted to do the ritual, but we'll oh. just we'll just fast forward through. <laughs> I was gonna have her say there's no time and then have you try and convince oh, her okay. and all of that, but we've already oh. spent way too much time on this. So let's just pretend you already decided to do this after you wrote a rambling long letter and all of that happened in a span of one minute. All right, <laughs> all right. Um, so first round, a queen of spades. Okay. So Adelaide, uh, you rolled a? Seven. Okay, so that is going to be one success. You need four successes in three rounds. All right, second round, don't roll. I'm not gonna, I'm waiting. Seven of spades. Okay. That's a five. Okay. And the third round, a six of spades. Okay. Come on, Eddie. Ugh, can I have a reroll? Yes. Oh, no. Woo! I aced it. Uh, ten. Is a success with a raise. That is yes. enough. So, Adelaide. You pull out the 12 ounces of beach sand and the rattlesnake <laughs> rattle that you just always have with you. Just rattling around, walking around campus, rattling. 
Uh, and you perform the ritual. You've done it enough at this point and studied up on it that you are relatively competent with it and you can do it quickly and smoothly, which is good because you needed that. Uh, your final roll was a 10, correct? Mm -hmm. That is the roll to activate the ritual, Adelaide. So that is a success with a raise. Oh. So you all gain a plus two to your toughness, I believe. It's protection. Uh, so two points of armor. Two points oh, of armor. Two points of armor. Okay. Yes. And that lasts for a while? That lasts for the duration of the Dean's choice. Sounds good. That, that makes <laughs> okay. a lot of sense. I like that. Okay. Are, are you quite finished? Yes. Yeah, yes. We're ready. So. Yeah. I, so. I mean, it's life or death thing. Yeah. We're ready. Yes, All exactly. Right. And now we've less than an hour to All open right. your portal. Come on. Just know. When you go through to the other side, I don't know what to expect. Be prepared for anything. It, it, it could be some hellish alien landscape beyond your comprehension. So just steal your minds and your souls. And as much as it pains me, good luck to the four of you. And she turns and faces the wall and raises a hand and speaks one word in a strange and alien tongue. And as she does, there is a literal tearing sound like someone is slowly ripping a sheet of paper in half down the middle. And the wall in front of her begins to separate. A crack forms in it and it pushes out, revealing blackness dotted with countless stars. Helen is sitting there just pushing her hand forward and you can see visible strain on her face as with her other arm, she gestures through the doorway and the four mercenaries that still survive pile in and arrange themselves around the pentagram, guns pointed at the portal and ready. And then she gives one final look at the four of you. Okay, right. let's do it. Let's hold hands just in case, like, it's one of those things where you land in different places if you're not connected. <laughs> okay. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I guess. All right. Yeah, fine. And Ron squeezes your the hands that are next to him, and he just turns to all of you and just, may Ron Tagoth eat you first? <sighs> you too, buddy. Sure, man. You too. Yeah. Oh! And the head pull. <laughs> I guess we jump through. You jump through the portal. Holding hands in a line, you run the four of you right through that crack in the wall, directly into the blackness and the field of stars. And for what feels like forever, you're falling. And then suddenly you stop and you find yourself standing, the four of you still holding hands in the exact same room you left. But it's it different. Work? Everything is distorted somehow, almost like you're viewing it underwater and flickering shadows run up and down the walls, playing in the lights that you cannot see oh the God. source of. It's like the upside down, maybe. And if it is, okay, just, yeah, keep that in mind. Your voices sound hollow and echoey. Uh, you can all hear Adelaide uh, speaking and it, it, it sounds distorted somehow. Does it to me too? Uh, it does, yeah. It, it, it feels a little bit like, like being underwater, except that you can move freely. And there's a couple of other things you notice as well. Glows, glowing light, soft glowing light in various different colors some, well, some of it soft, some of it harsh and intense are emanating from several different sources in the room. Around the pentagram, which you can see a sort of hazy image of on the floor in the center of the room, there are several sort of indistinct objects, but on top of each one of those objects is a crystal clear candle flame that is burning brightly. In the center of the pentagram, there is some sort of wispy white mist that looks very much to your eyes like the uh, beginnings of the appearance of a spirit, at least the ones that you have encountered before, but you know it was where Helen was sitting when you went through. Just behind her, on the other side of the pentagram, there are four more 
wispy white presences just sort of floating in the air. People must be to this side like spirits are to our side or, or something like that. I guess. Oh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's like we've entered right. the spirit world. Yeah, yeah, like when you die in World of Warcraft, like you walk around and everybody else is walking around, but they're right. like, different, you know? Like, oh, yeah. So and there's more. To... Sawyer, as you're all trying to get your bearings, you, you see out of the corner of your eye a, a light pulsing up from beneath you and looking down, you see in your pocket where you keep the lighter, a soft golden pulsing glow emanating from the lighter itself. Similarly, Adelaide's locket is glowing very slightly, a soft gold. Adelaide is burning with an intense flame. There is just red energy just throbbing and pulsing around Adelaide. It looks as though it is trying to break out of some barrier just beyond the confines of her body. And as you watch, it's easy to see that, that it is beating in time with her heartbeat. Adelaide, you can just feel raw energy beneath your flesh just begging you to give it an outlet and to release it. Calvin is also blazing with a sort of orange, sickly light that is glowing from the middle of his torso. Uh, and Ron is covered in what looks like some sort of rainbow oil slick on water. Not always visible when you look at him, at him but from time to time, just a, a myriad of colors just ripple across Ron's form. Adelaide yeah. and Calvin, since you have the gamer background, can I get an occult role from all of you? Yeah. Okie dokie. Uh, it wasn't a background. It was oh. a... Uh, uh, extracurricular, sorry. Yes, but I don't have it anymore, technically. You don't? I technically don't, yeah. Well, then, no. Just Adelaide. You said a cult, right? A cult. Four. Four is a success, Adelaide. It appears to you that things of a magical nature uh, give off some sort of radiance on this side. And all of you can see from down that long hallway that the wires are running from connected to the pentagram, there is a bright, brilliant light pulsing from down that direction. Okay. Right. You, you guys oh. feel okay, right? Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, I think so. Okay, I, I, I think that um, everything that's glowing all these different ways are somehow magical or have some magical elements to them. Yeah, that, that makes I sense. I'm I'm not magical. I mean, you're magical to us, you, man. You not to mention, of... you do have that weird fake connection with your cult, so maybe that has something to do with it. Oh shit! Oh. You think that shit was real? There I was... mean, what is this? All right, we don't have too much time to just like okay. talk about all of this. Let's, We've got to try and go. find. Yeah. Move to it right. towards that light. You guys are going further into the super collider towards the light. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so you move down there, and, and, and moving is, is strange. It's, um, you're doing it the way you always did, but, but it feels weird and different somehow to, to, to move like that here. The distance seems to move in spurts and starts. It's disorienting, but you're trying to get your heads wrapped around it as you move further down the hallway and open up into a chamber uh, a large chamber with three points of immediate interest, all connected to those wires that are running back to the pentagram. One at the far end of the room is Lily Boatwright's dimensional visualizer. You'll remember this as the device that was uh, releasing ghosts into a school building at night that were uh, possessing people and then trying to bring them through the portal to the other side. Right. You recovered it and it went missing. Here it is, Lily Boatwright's dimensional visualizer. In between it, suspended in some sort of strange technological device, is a blue orb that looks like a blinking eyeball inside of a glass encasement. It is glowing brilliantly blue and the light is very warm, but the eye is just constantly scanning back and forth, looking over the four of you sightlessly, but still taking you in. And then at the other end of the room, 
th funneled through what looked like a series of lenses and pointed directly at that blue orb is something else. It's De La Garza's cross. But now, its design makes sense. Before, you were never sure why the bottom part of the cross came to a very sharp point. And now, seeing it floating here, attached to the spear haft that it must have always intended to be attached to, De La Garza's cross is instead a brilliant, shining golden spear floating in the air. We should take that, right? Oh, yeah. No. I mean, yeah, that looks cool yeah. as shit. Are, well, are we sure that this stuff isn't gonna like break whatever's keeping this portal together? Well, I don't think it has anything to do with the portal. Yeah, I, I feel like my personal connection with this is, uh, you know, there. So I, I'm just gonna take a game. I'm just gonna go to get close to it, see what's up, and I'll yes. grab it if I feel safe. You know. Okay. We gotta use every tool we have, right? You're, you're right. right. There's no time to play cautious now. What about these other things? So the the eye that you've described, mm -hmm. is that like, or, or actually all of these things, are they portable? Like the the dimensional visual Dimensional visualizer, no, is a, gi is a giant mechanical apparatus that forms an electronic gateway. Um, it, it would be clear to all of you that whatever ritual Helen was originally intending to perform, uh, and you remember Glenn Mac mentioning uh, needing a, a focus of very powerful objects, it appears that this was designed to be part of that ritual. All right. I'm gonna go up to that spear and check it out. Yeah. You move closer to the spear, Calvin, and you can see the familiar markings of De La Garza's cross, the, the strange, uh, incomprehensible uh, writings and etchings that were on it are now traced with golden light and glowing and pulsing softly. It's cool as shit. I'm gonna sort of reach out and see if I feel anything. You reach out into the air around the floating spear and feel nothing. I'm gonna grab it. Your hands close on the haft and you pull it to you and it moves reluctantly as though you're pulling it through some sort of gelatin, but eventually you pull it to yourself and you are now holding the golden spear. Check it out. It's, it's fine. I mean, I think it's fine. Hey, good, we might need to stab demons with it. Or, right, or yeah, hey, yeah. So aren't you looking for something, something to hit things with? No, I, I mean, I, I've got my lighter. If anybody needs it, it's probably one of you three. All right, Addy, Ron? The spear? Um, I mean, sure, yeah, okay, I guess. I mean, I have the gun. I don't have locks, because they would come out of the closet. Um, Addy, uh, maybe I'll take a second gun. You could hold on to this. I mean, those, the gun and the spear come out are very, two very different things. <laughs> How about well, since the two of you have guns, we give it to Ron? He's okay. the best at physical fighting anyway. Sure. I mean, that makes, that makes a lot of sense, Ron. What are you thinking? Um, I mean, I'll hold on to it if one of you needs it later, though. Feel free, because yeah, I, I might do just... better without sure. a weapon. All right. Um, I'm going to chuck it to Ron. Ron, you grab the spear and just give it a, uh exploratory twirl in your fingers. Um, it feels solid and very well balanced. Not only that, it hums with a desire to be used. And you feel like if you were using the spear, it would be a two-handed weapon. You feel like <laughs> it would give you a little more reach. And you feel like it might up your parry by one if you were wielding the spear mm. as well. Whoa. Mm. Okay. So oh, hold on, I... What about this eye thing? I don't all, know what it does, but... You all look at this blue eye, this brilliant blue floating eye in glass, and you all have a sense of deja vu, like you've seen this or something very much like this before. Does it and you look, look at it being... Any... Go on. You look at it seemingly serving as the final focusing lens of the spear into the dimensional visualizer. 
So it's an orb. Does it look anything like the orb that our uh, good friend Randy used to have? Not at all. This okay. is much larger. Uh, about as big as like that blue lens that you guys pulled out of the bottom of Lake Greystone oh. from the lantern. Okay. On this side, though, it doesn't look like a blue lens. It looks like an eye floating in blue glass. All right. Oh, well, right. This is whatever the shit we fought a gator for. Whatever this thing is, if it's powerful enough to, to be part of this ritual, maybe we should take it with us. Yeah, let's take, let's take everything we can carry that seems helpful. Okay. okay. You want me to grab it or you want to do the honors? Um, I'll, I'll grab it. But if we figure out what it does, we might redistribute. Okay, uh, Sawyer, you walk up to grab it? Yeah. You walk up to the, to the orb and just reach out and grasp it in your hand and pull it back. And it's about the size of, like, you know, a, a, a prop crystal ball, but it, it feels somewhat light in your hand and warm, pleasantly warm. In fact, in the, in the blue aura of soft, warm light that it gives off, you all feel a bit safer. Okay. That feels good. Okay. Would you do you right. turn it on? Is a Han switch in there or something? I don't know. We don't have time to figure it out. Let's okay. keep going. Let's do it. All right. Where is it that you are going? What are our options? Well, down here, there's just the endless tunnels of the Super Collider. But the oh. convergence uh, was starting to happen on your side of the portal above the air of the stadium. Right, we gotta get outside. Let's yeah. get outside. So to the elevator, that's how we get outside. Okay, all right, so you guys turn and go back past the pentagram, back through the offices, back down the hallway and into the waiting room where there is the elevator door and the button just sitting in front of you, still flickering in that soft dreamlike shadowy light. Bing. You press the button and nothing happens. Crap. What if we can't get the electronics to work from this side? But I'll try it. <laughs> Adelaide, you <laughs> press the button. Uh-huh. <laughs> and roll a D6 for me. Is there a good outcome on this table that we don't know about? I mean, yeah. Oh, she got a one. Is that a good? one? It's probably not good. As you reach out to touch it, Adelaide, a spark flies between your fingertip and the elevator button, and a little bit of that red, angry, pulsing light surrounding you just leaps out and sparks against the elevator console, and there is a sound as the place. Uh, as a shower of sparks shoot out from it, blackening the steel around the button, and you hear a clunk from within the elevator. I don't, okay. I don't know. I don't know what happened. I don't know what that was. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, maybe there are stairs somewhere. Yeah, yes. it's got to be like a stairway or something Think around safer. here. Oh, yeah, God. There needs to be egress. Right. But there aren't stairs. Um, okay. And you all already know that because you've been through this these rooms, and the only way out of this waiting room is through the door. Okay. Okay. All right. Well... I'll try yeah. pushing the doors open. I'll, I'll help Ron do that. The doors. Okay. All right. Uh, so you all go over there and start trying to wedge your fingers in and pull the door open. Uh, Calvin and Ron are doing that? Yeah. Give me a spirit roll, both of you. Okie dokie. I used it. Uh, uh, that's an eight. An eight. I got a nine. A nine, okay, both of you got a success with the raise. You go over to the door and Calvin, you're right behind Ron and you see him kind of like, just shake out his hands and sort of put one hand up on the door to like feel it out and see where the good spot's gonna be then put the other hand up like he's gonna reach into the seam. But you notice Calvin as he does that, maybe because you're primed to look for it, maybe because of everyone, you're the only one who spends so much time around a ghost. Ron's fingers, even though he presses his hand against the, the elevator door and seems satisfied with what he's feeling, you see his palm sort of sink somewhat into the uh, elevator door before he starts trying to move it open. And then 
Ron, you pause as well because something doesn't feel right. Wait, and you notice what you've just done too. Wait, wh wh what is that? Uh, uh, wait a minute. I, okay. Uh, I'm gonna just forcefully try and put my hand through. Are you doing that door. as well, Calvin? Yeah. All right, so both of you just kind of stop and look at each other and then almost uh, simultaneously reach out and try and push your hands through the elevator door and they go through with no resistance whatsoever. You just feel a little bit of cold. Oh, and that's how all. did you how did you do wow. that? Uh, uh, you just uh, had to believe, right, Ron? Oh my God. Uh, do you think like we could just not take stairs and just shoot upwards if we believe? Well, let's let's maybe let's take a peek inside here first. Uh, uh, I'll I'll be right back. Okay. So I'm just gonna push on through to the other side. All right, Calvin, you take a deep <laughs> breath, and then just walk through the doors of the elevator, and a cold wave of ice rushes through your body. But on the other side, you step out into the elevator shaft. Well. That's where you are, but also your face is bisected by the elevator, which is stuck kind of halfway between the door and the wall above, and you've walked out into it with your nose uh, and the top of your head, the only things inside of the elevator. But if you, when you jerk back reflexively, you get a glimpse of the shaft around the elevator. Is there a ladder in here? There is a ladder in here. There are service rungs that lead all the way back up to the surface. Okay. Okay, I'm going to make note of where it is and then pull back out of the shaft. Calvin just slowly phases through the wall of the elevator. What was what was there? What did you see? It's the whole elevator is just full of demons, man. There's demons everywhere. So we're Fuck fucking it. dead. We'll have to figure out another way to get up there. No, I'm just fucking with it. It's, it's empty. So the Alvin, this busted. is not the time, all oh, right? come on, man. When is it no, not the time? No, it's not the time. What Chill was in out. there? It's fine. It's an elevator shaft. Elevator's busted. But there's a ladder going up, and we can take it up. Okay, right. let's go. Yeah, remember how long it took the elevator to come down here? Yeah, it's a long, um, it's a long ladder. Well, we could try the, like, flying thing, right? <laughs> I mean, it'd be faster. Might as well. I, sure. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, I'll I'll start I'll try and stick the spear through to see if it will follow into the elevator shaft with you me. shove the spear in and it also passes seamlessly through okay then I will I will just go through okay Ron you walk through and you too find yourself uh your head in an elevator your body somewhere else uh I want to try to fly. Okay, Adelaide. So <laughs> you have already seen uh, Ron and Calvin walk through a wall. Yeah. So you can make your spirit roll at a plus two. Okay. Okay. Wow. I didn't think that this was something Adelaide would even ever get to try. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Wow. Can I have a reroll? <laughs> yeah, one point of extra credit. And now might be as good a time as any to point out that... Uh, Kawagaris actually wanted to give three points of extra credit to the players, not Ooh. one. So that's two more coming at you guys. Yeah. Oh. That's a four. <laughs> a four is a success, Adelaide. So you realize you can push yourself through solid walls and, and you kind of reach down to the floor and, and experiment with pushing your hand into it. It feels strange, but then excitedly, you stand in the room and just focus on up and nothing happens. What do you jump? After a moment, Adelaide just sort of jumps into the air and then falls back down to the ground. Okay, you, you told me not to joke, and you're you're jumping in the room for no reason. I'm no, no, I, I think she's right. It was worth a shot, right? I don't think it worked. That or I didn't believe hard enough. I don't know. I, well, let's <laughs> let's start climbing. Let's start yeah. climbing yeah. up the ladder as fast as we can, and, and if. If something strikes us, like some sort of new ability, then then we'll switch into that. All right. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Let's let's go. I'm gonna okay. Get on so in with, there. With the spear and the orb and yourselves, you begin climbing the ladder. Now, as Sawyer pointed out, this was quite a long elevator ride down, and the ladder just stretches up above you into darkness up in the elevator shaft. 
Um, I'm going to need an athletics roll from all of you to avoid fatigue. Uh, neat. Neat. Athletics is like my nemesis in this game. <laughs> For an academic, that makes sense. Uh, can I get a piece of extra credit, please? A piece of extra credit for Ron. I got a four. Seven for Adelaide. Four for Sawyer. I got an eight. Eight for Calvin. Ron? I got a nine. A nine. All right. So you all succeed, some of you exceptionally. You climb for what feels like forever. Up and up mm. and up. And, and then you start getting... You see uh, what looks like uh, the parking garage exit for the elevator, and then the ground floor exit, and you realize you are now up back at ground level, climbing up into the stadium itself. You've got to get all the way up to the alumni level, so there's still a few more uh, levels to go, but eventually you make it up to where you had gotten onto this elevator in the first place, and the four of you just are there on the ladder. What do you want to do? Um, I guess we got to go go the same way out that we did in. So I'm gonna try and push through the door with while holding on the ladder, just like reaching out and seeing if that works. So you hold onto the ladder and just sort of push your hand up and through the door, and just as it did before, it passes through the elevator door. All right, it's all good. Let's do it. All right, let's go, ghost okay. team. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna... Oh, I get it. Yeah. So you you all climb up and push your way out of the elevator door and find yourselves in the shadowy, strange, distorted hallways behind the alumni boxes of the stadium. It is eerily quiet up here in this hallway. All there are are the doors that lead into each individual alumni box and the two directions of the hallway that wrap around the stadium to either side. Um, so I want to try and go through one of the alumni boxes just to like get a so that we can get a view of the uh, the stadium. Okay. Because the boxes have are, are like open out to the stadium, right? Uh, yes, yes. The boxes are there for alumni to view the games. So you want to walk through yeah. one of those doors and into an alumni box? Uh huh. Sawyer. Yeah. You push through the door, and poke your head into the box and look out. And the box has multiple seats uh, with like a little thin railing table in front of them for drinks and snacks, and then opens up into giant glass panels that look down on the stadium below through here. And what you see, you cannot even begin to comprehend. You just see what looks like a wall of moving flesh. And you hear distant, horrific sounds. But that is all that is pressed up against the glass of this alumni box. Oh my god. I don't, I don't know what the hell this is. We need Did... to get out. We need a better vantage point. All right. We can try and make our way back down to the field. Should we go to the field or try to get to like the highest point? You're already, the alumni boxes are already up point. pretty high, at the, not the highest point, but very high up in the stadium. If you keep following those hallways in either direction, they'll open up into an out, outdoor stadium concourse. Okay, let's, let's yeah. see what we can see. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, move out towards the concourse. So, you all move out to the outside. Oh! Before we go out, should we plug our ears? I don't think it matters on this side. Adelaide says at the absolute last moment, as you all <laughs> stop and go, what? As you move <laughs> through the wall, uh, leading to the outside. Out here, the world is much, much different. The sky is a nuclear fiery red, just a matte flat color that just soaks this, the air and the land around you. In the middle of the field is a impossibly massive creature standing hundreds of feet high. This 
was what you saw, Sawyer. It appears that part of one of its legs was backed up against the window of the alumni building. Some monstrous demonic looking entity with four gigantic arms towers up above the limits of the stadium. And it has its hands wrapped around a massive dark pulsing obelisk and is just holding it in place. Can I get a notice roll from all of you? No, yeah, okay. I see it. Holy <laughs> fuck. I noticed something weird in front of us. Uh, can I use an extra credit, please? Wait. Uh, yes. One for Ron. I've got a nine. A nine. Fifteen. One. Fifteen. A eleven. One. Yeah. And an eleven. But not a crit fail, right, Ron? Not a crit fail, no. Okay. So, you all don't even have time for fear as your minds are just trying to take in the sheer size and scope of what you're seeing. This obelisk is even more gigantic than the creature that is holding it, but it is apparent to Calvin and Adelaide that as this monstrous demonic creature holds the obelisk, its arms appear to be shaking. And Sawyer, as you look up at it, you get a glimpse of its gigantic, evil, distorted face. And you can see its eyes have rolled up into the back of its head and it keeps moving its head forward as though it is about to collapse from sheer exhaustion up and down the lengths of this obelisk, dark energy runs and crackles and from time to time will shoot out from the obelisk into the sky around the stadium and latch onto colored lines of light that crisscross the air above the stadium and pull them slowly like tightening rubber bands closer and closer to the tip of the obelisk which stretches up into the sky above. But as you see those bands of colorful light being pulled in closer and closer, you start to see hazy, distorted glimpses of a blue sky uh, just beginning to deepen into twilight. It looks like you are looking through flashes into your own world. This is what is causing the convergence, this giant obelisk pulling the ley lines together just above its tip, and they do not have much further to go. Adelaide. Can I get an occult roll from you at a minus two? Yeah. Can I ask uh, just an impression question as she's rolling that? Uh, yes. This monster seems like definitively evil, right? I, I mean, it's not wearing a name tag, but it's a giant. <laughs> you've you've seen, you have seen a couple of demons, and sure. this looks like a demon to the nth degree, some sort of impossibly massive hell spawn. Okay. You got a nine? That's with your minus two? Yeah. Well I mean, done, Adelaide. It appears to you, looking at this, as, as you notice, and Sawyer also points out how exhausted this creature looks, it looks like it is a battery of some kind for this obelisk. But you don't have much time to really let even this incredible sight sink in before you start to see other shapes swooping through the air around you, dark, misshapen, burly shapes with giant leathery flapping wings swooping and screeching through the air. And as you look down, you see one of them swoop towards the other side of the stadium and grab what looks like a person and pull them, kicking and screaming up into the air and drop them down to the stadium floor below where they fall in a heap in the middle of the stadium and looking down from this giant behemoth holding the obelisk, you see the stadium green itself is covered with writhing, moving shapes. There are more of these human-like things just moving around down there and you see a giant cage made out of something unpleasant and white. And inside of it are many many roiling shapes and screaming faces and hands and feet. It looks like a mass of spirits contained inside of this cage and sitting atop the cage, its spindly limbs all akimbo and a giant smile splitting its face is the thing in the corner 
from your freshman year, just sitting on top of the cage and leaning down over it. And now as you watch, it reaches one long stretched out limb inside of it and grasps one of the flailing spirit forms from inside and pulls it out and also flings it out of the cage into the middle of the stadium over into the same area where that flying creature dropped the person just earlier. And as you follow the arc of that spirit to the middle of the field, you see it fall at the feet of a very tall and shining like obsidian creature. You can't really see much of it from here. All right, just, just describe all that again. <laughs> no, do not do that. Uh, what was it, where, I mean, where so do I need to pick up? You were, you were describing the big uh, obelisk, uh, black had creature a... in the middle. Well, yeah. no, you, you, had, you had the creature that the power shifted up its, its arms and then it hit the two spirits in its hands. Yeah, and, it, like, and then something, them. And, yeah, and then something happened to, to them. At that point, like, they, they turn okay. into those yes. monsters. So this, yes, this, this, this shining knife-like obsidian creature just holds these spirits in its in its iron grip, and that dark energy rips up its arms and just explodes into them, twisting and reshaping them into these loping humanoid monstrosities you see milling around the field. And as you look, there are smaller little imp-like demons and other larger demons, demons that you've seen in books and in stories, some that you've caught glimpses of in real life, some that you can't even begin to understand what they are, all just pacing around the stadium. You see more of those grotesque humanoid creatures and also what appear to be other just wandering spirits all spread out through the stadium, all agitated and all with a sense of expectancy and waiting. It seems like there is a, a beacon lit right now for all creatures on this side of reality. And as you're all standing there taking this in, you hear, psst, Calvin, psst. Rosa. You all hear this. Rosa. You look Rosa? over. You look over uh, down the hallway, or 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 just just a little bit further on, and you see peeking out from around a, a corner the face of Rosa. For those of you who know who Rosa is, and for those of you who don't, you see both Adelaide and Calvin respond as though it is Rosa. Yes. Yeah, yeah. What? Oh my God! Y'all can see her. Wow! This is come Rosa. Here. Come here! Come here! Okay. Uh, yeah. 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 Right. Let's Run go. Over. Let's go. So you, you all just kind of like try and, and just keep your heads down and rush over to where Rosa is. It, there's so much happening in the stadium. You don't appear to have been spotted. What are you, where, I, 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 I tried to, to follow you all from, from, from the car. I, I, I was gonna help, but I, I, got, I got stopped by... Yeah, yeah, we, we, we can see that. Right. Uh, it's good. It's good to see you, though. Uh, we're here to. Rosa looks solid to you. Uh, she still has the kind of ethereal glow around her, that sort of blue-white shine that she always does, Calvin. But normally, she is made up of that energy, and now it just appears to be softly surrounding her. Why can? Why can you all see me? Wait, wait. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna test something real quick. You reach out and touch her on her forehead. Oh my god! <clears throat> you feel you, you felt that you, you're real. Well, I mean, you're you, we're we're not real. Or you're real. So, something's happening. And we we can, went through a portal. Yeah, we're not we, dead. I don't we, think. Are we? Are we dead? That lady kill us? Uh, I don't think so. What, what, what are you know. doing here? King, we've got to stop it. Yeah. I, I mean, obviously, if, if it does, if it manages to pull everything into that obelisk, everyone we know is dead. Yeah. Okay. Well, if, if that's, if that's what you're here for, then, then, then I'm here to help. I, I told you I was going to help Calvin and, I, and I'm, I'm here. Hey, I'm, I never had a doubt. Wow. It's, it's good to see you and it's good to, 
can I give you a hug? Like, it is, I, I would like that very much. Okay, come here. And, and I give Rose a very big hug. You wrap her up in a hug and she just clutches you to her tightly and just, just holds you for a long moment before gently breaking away. I, so if you're here and that thing, what are we doing? Well, it's very nice to meet you and all, but do you, you, you've, you've been like in ghost rules longer than we have. Do you know if there's like a quick way for us to, I don't know, get out to the field? That thing that's like making those monsters might, is something we've dealt with before. Maybe we need to focus on that. So to be clear, the thing making the monsters is not the thing in the corner. The oh, thing in right. the corner like is it? manning the cage. Oh, There is yeah. a separate entity at the feet there's of the Titan. Yeah, Got there's it. three big baddies here. The thing in the corner, the thing making the things that are going out, and then the four-armed thingy grabbing the obelisk. Understood. Four big um, baddies, because Calvin's here. So, what do you want to do? Um, shit, like, I don't think we're going to be able to talk our way out of this. Like, we got to get in there and kick some ass. Well, we got to do it now, because, like, things are looking pretty grim. Okay, kick some ass is, like very uh, ethereal, worldly, realistic plane. We don't know if these things have asses to kick. You know what I mean? Maybe they didn't. Omar. Shut up, shut up. Everyone shut up, duck back. All right. Can you all make a stealth roll for me, please? <clears throat> we can make it. Can we succeed? Woo, I have that. I should have my stealth. Can I use a piece of extra credit, please? Yes, a piece of extra credit for Ron to get Stevens. Any modifier? Uh, nope. Uh, that's a four. Four for four. Ron, four for Sawyer. I got a three. Three for Calvin. I got a five. Five for Adelaide. Do you want to reroll, Calvin? No, I don't. <clears throat> okay. So. What did you get? As you all duck back behind the corner, Calvin is last to move and is reluctant to. Uh, not quite sure what's got Rosa startled. Your impulse is to figure out what is doing it and, and help her in some way. And as yeah. she tries desperately to clutch at you, she eventually is able to get a solid grip on you and pulls you back <laughs> behind the corner, but not before you see two of those grotesque loping figures coming down the hallway towards you and you're not sure if they saw you or not, Calvin. Shh, shh. So I just wanna see what's happening, I'm sorry. You hear a grunting, snuffling sound, and you hear footsteps getting closer. So he reaches into his pocket and grabs his lighter and just has it ready. Okay. I mean, I assume we're all weapons out at this point. You reach into your pocket and grab your lighter. The rest of you prepare as you see two dark shapes move over near the exit to your hallway and stop looking around, sniffing the air. You see their eyes, which are crazed and sightless. And you see their faces, which even though distorted and corrupted as they are, are familiar to you. This is Matt and Ariel, the two students that died at the beginning of your junior year that you were unable to help. And they stand there, sniffing the air and looking around. And then one of them bumps into the other and they start just crying out and growling at each other and start shoving and thrashing at one another before finally they roll on and continue moving down the hall. What are those things? I think those what are people. This? What is this place, Calvin? I, this is not a, a ghost rules place. This is, this is somewhere else. Okay, all right, chill. We're, we're gonna fix this. We're gonna fix everything. We just gotta figure out what's causing this and then just take that thing down. Wait, to go. you guys this saw it, right? Those two, that was Matt and Ariel. I think that the, the spirits that are trapped in that thing are people who have died or disappeared at UV, at, at, at ETU. And Rosa, they're being turned into these monsters. Rosa, if this isn't like ghost rules, 
are we not in the space that you normally inhabit? Did you follow us or something it's through the portal? Kind of the same, but it's it's different too. It's it's not. This isn't right. This this shouldn't be here. Something is, is breaking through. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what we're trying to stop. Okay, look. Those things that are going on down at, at the down on the field. We we've got to stop them and we've got to come up with a plan of attack, right? I think we need to try and, and free the spirits from the cage first. Because the more of those things that they're able to turn into these monsters, the harder this is all gonna be. And clearly those were people at one point. Might cause some chaos, you're saying. Yeah. Stop them from getting more reinforcements. Stop them from, I don't know, fighting off the people who are fighting on the other end. I can do it. I can, can do it. Look, what? look, there's there's other other spirits here. And she, she points out across the stadium and you see other normal looking humans, again, with that sort of blue ethereal tinge to them, just like Rosa has. And they too are wandering around seeming confused and, and mystified. I, I don't think that, that I would be out of place if I just moved down there to, to open the cage. Uh, I mean, you, are you sure? Cause uh, that thing looks pretty nasty. I mean, I don't, want, I don't want you getting hurt. There's so much going on. I, I'm, I can probably just avoid detection and blend in with the crowd. All right. Do we not blend in? Do we stand out that much? You don't. You're not like me. But I don't know how clear that is to people who aren't me. I, I, I'm sorry. I, I don't know what the rules are here. Well, look, as much as I don't want to put anyone in danger, we don't have to. I think we've got to take any possible course that we can, right? Maybe if we can go down and, I don't know, distract the thing in the corner or fight that thing that's making those monsters, we can give Rosa some opportunity to open up that cage and, and let those spirits out. As you all look, you see those bright lines of colored light being pulled inexorably closer to the tip of the dark obelisk that the gigantic demon is holding aloft in the middle of the stadium field. Okay, well, what do we got to do? We got to do it quick. Excellent. And that sounds like a, a good plan. Let's, let's go with that, I guess. Okay. So the plan is send Rosa down to open the cage and then take advantage of the chaos? Yeah. yeah. I we think should... then go after that demon thing that's trying to create the those yeah i, I was I thinking know. we could yeah try and draw them in like a different direction so that rosa has a little more freedom well, let, let, after so, the obsidian guy doesn't he seem to be the ringleader maybe i mean that that other thing is very tall and i don't know that we're going to be much more than but ants to that thing. And then there's your gleeful, smiling friend still periodically reaching into the unpleasant looking white cage and pulling out another spirit to toss at the feet. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to mess with that guy. If we could help it, you know. Rose is going to be going right to that guy. And we've okay. dealt with him before. Maybe we can draw him away. Well, let's, let's see if it notices Rosa. And as soon as it does, we'll spring into action. If it notices Rosa, it might be too late. Don't. Worry about me. I'm, I already lived. Y you four, you four have lives. You have souls. You have something to go back to. Just, just stay alive. No, don't, don't, don't talk like that, Rosa. Come on, you, I'm you're not gonna be fine. saying anything. I'm just saying, just do what you have to do. Are we ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do it. So yeah. you all move out of that shadowy alcove of a hallway and closer into the stadium proper, moving over to where the stairs down through the rows and rows of seats begin leading downwards all the way to the field below. And with one final look back at all of you, Rosa nods and then gives you a, a little confident half smile, Calvin, and turns and starts 
walking down the steps, trying to look like any other wandering, confused spirit. But after she takes a few steps, she stops and cocks her head to the side. You've seen this behavior from her before, Calvin, this sort of far away dreaminess. And it seems to have struck her now at the worst possible moment. Shit. What? What's happening? going on? It's, it's, that, it's that music or, or something like it. Calvin, do you hear him? He's what? calling. It's it's beautiful. No, no, Rosa, here. no. Here. No. I'm no, here. No, 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 I'm no, no, here. No. She raises her arms up and begins to shout that she's here. And as she does that, you hear a screech from the air above you all. And you see one of those wheeling bat-winged creatures lock in on Rosa and start gliding lazily down towards her. I'm going to start I'm shooting here. at it. I'm going to start here. shooting at it right now. You pull your gun, Calvin, and start to try and fire at this thing. We are in a combat. Uh, cool. Rontagas Stevens, a five of diamonds. Calvin, five of clubs. Damn it. Adelaide, four of clubs. Sawyer, either a jack of diamonds, a jack of clubs, or a six of hearts. I'll go with the uh, Jack of Diamonds. The Jack of Diamonds for Sawyer. The winged creature gets a five of spades. Would anyone like to redraw? Not me. Mm -hmm. uh, spades go before clubs. Is that right? Correct. Yep. No. Um, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna use a Benny because this is for Rosa. Calvin is using a Benny to redraw. So two will I. We'll use one of my bennies. Oh. Calvin, a two of spades. <gasps> oh. <laughs> Dang, even, that was close. Even the five? <laughs> yeah. Oh. The winged creature. I'm so excited. A three of spades. Hey. Oh. Of course, it will keep the five. Now, come so, on. As it starts to whirl around in the sky and zoom in, gliding down like a bird of prey right towards Rosa, Calvin pulls his gun. Sawyer, what would you like to do? You're up first. Um, and then next up will be the winged creature. It's coming right after me? It's going after Rosa. Oh, OK. Uh, I, I'm I, sorry. I, I'm sorry. It, yes, it is going after you in initiative order, but it is flying towards Rosa. Right, right. OK, but you said next to go is it or me? No, I, I, so I'm going now. You go first, and who. then it goes. I'm just, I, I, that was just a little bit of helpful information to let you guys know who's but up Calvin next. Calvin still goes before it does, right? No. No. Okay. Uh, All right. In that case, I am going to, uh, I'll, I'll try and fireball it. I'll, I'll grab my lighter that I already had out and just try and throw one at it to, is it, it is, seem like it's too far away for it? It is not hit? yet close enough for that, Sawyer. In that case, I'm going to like hold until it gets within what seems like range, and then I'll be ready to do that. Okay. All right, so Sawyer, you go on hold, and as as you wait, you you see Calvin trying to fumble his gun out of its holster, but he's going to be too late. This thing swoops down like a scaly, overgrown gorilla with bat wings and screeches with its wide open jaws and reaches out arms to try and grab Rosa and lift her up off the ground. And as it flies down closer, it comes into range, Sawyer and you are going to try to interrupt it, I need an athletics roll from you. All right. Athletics is my nemesis. Um, this is opposed, right? Yes. So I got a seven. A seven, would you like to keep it? Yeah, I'll keep it. I rolled a one, but I'm gonna spend a point of curse or extra credit here. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> Nine. Ugh. So as it swoops down from the sky, Sawyer, you start to flick your lighter, but it moves so much quicker once it swoops. It's using the updraft 
from this hellish dimension to aid its ascent. And it grabs Rosa as she raises her arms and she says, I'm coming. And it swoops her up into the air and off the ground and starts to fly back towards the field. At that point, Sawyer, you can go. All right. I'm it has still... Rosa and is lifting her up off the ground. I'm gonna still try and torch it if I can, if I can manage to, like, it, it, is it big enough that I could conceivably try and aim it so it doesn't also hit her? No. You're <sighs> aiming a really... flamethrower. Yeah. But like, she's, can, can I run? Would I have time to like run and grab her or is she already like high off the ground? You could run and grab her. Yeah, it's grabbed her and is lifting her up off the ground. Okay, then I want to go and run and try and like grab Rosa's legs and try and like keep her down. Okay, so you run out as it starts to lift her up off the ground and, and just cursing, you snap your lighter shut and jump out and try and grab Rosa to keep her on the ground. Can I get an athletics roll from you? This too will be opposed, Sawyer. Freaking athletics. But I will give you a plus two because it did not know you were there. Okay. It does now. Oh, right, I aced on both, so. Hell nice. yes. This could go well. Oh, double ace on the six. Nice. Okay, yes, yes. so that this is this is really good. Um, so that's a nineteen. A nineteen. Holy All shit. right. You want to keep it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that rolled out. I got an eight. I will spend a point of extra credit. An eight is all I get. You succeed with a raise, Sawyer. You come running out and you leap out and grab her around the waist and yank her down out of the grasp of this thing. She slides with her arms aloft, just moves right through its grasp and you pull her down to the ground and collapse in a heap with her. And as you do, the thing whips its eyes at you and opens its mouth and screeches. First thing, I need a fear roll from you, Sawyer. Okay. Uh -oh. Uh, no matter what I get on the fear roll, so you're just like, ah, fucking shoot it! <laughs> <sighs> that makes okay. sense to me. The second thing is, you hear answering shrieks from the sky above you. Oh, God. Cool. All right, fear roll. Modification? Nope. Uh, I got a four. Fucking shit, shoot it, Sawyer shouts. <laughs> <laughs> fucking shoot it! I'm working on it. Uh, Sawyer, that is your turn. Next up. Uh, Ron. Uh, um, oh, wait, Sawyer. You have the orb still, right? I do. So you had that in one hand as you grabbed her. We'll say it's easy to hold on to. I imagine it's mystical. I had it in a vest pocket. It's it's like that big, so it oh, probably so wouldn't fit in your, in your vest pocket. Yeah, it's like, like a crystal ball, crystal ball uh, prop size. All right, um, I didn't but light. So you hold it, you can still kind of like tuck it against your body and jump out and grab her, that's fine. Just know that one of your hands is occupied with that orb. However, as you get close to that demon, the blue light from the orb seems to strike its body and in the light of this orb, it seems somewhat less tough. Oh. Interesting. Okay. All right, Ron. So uh, you have Rosa, you're holding onto Rosa, but the thing flew away, is that right? Or? No, they're on the, no. he grabbed Rosa and pulled her out of its grasp. They are on the ground. The, ho the, the winged thing is just flapping in the air above them and has screeched out and answering screeches have been heard above you. Great, then I'm going to uh, run up and I'm going to try to uh, impale it on the spear. Okay, run. You come running from out of the darkness. Now Now it is prepared for uh, an altercation, so you do not get the plus two. But you yeah. run out, and you can stab it from a little bit further away, which is good. You don't have to be up in the air. You could be on the ground. And you try and shove De La Garza's cross and spear into this thing. Yes, Will you yes, give yes, me yes. a fighting roll, Ron? Yes. Yeah, baby. Be happy to. Ooh, that was very close to a crit fail. Um, may I have a piece of extra credit, please? You may. That was a one and a two. That's better. Aced it on the six. Much um, better. That's a nine. A nine. A nine is a success. Okay. Will you, will you roll damage, Ron? This is going to be strength mm -hmm. plus a d6 plus six. Whoa, plus nice. six. Wow. wow. 
That's that's really good. Does that ace does that six ace? No. Just naturally. Oh. It doesn't. Yeah, because it's a six, it just keeps. It's an infinite ace. Um. That would be nice. That's fourteen. Fourteen. Uh, I, I rolled. I rolled an eight. Fourteen. You come running out from the shadows and leaping somewhat into the air. You stab up with the golden spear, De La Garza's pointed cross at the tip of it, and the spear runs itself directly through the chest of this thing, and with a golden flash of light, this creature starts writhing and snarling on the end of it, and then just disintegrates into ash as the golden light burns it from the inside out. Uh, okay, we okay. gave that spear to the right person, I guess. Okay, that was handy. Um, <gasps> nice uh, fucking work, Ron. Holy Rosa, shit. are you okay? As you look up, though, Ron, you see three more of these things circling in the air around you, looking directly down at out down at you, and then looking at each other and screeching as they zoom down towards you. We gotta get out of here. Next can, up, can Calvin. I, where would we go? Uh, can I shoot at one of them? Are they close enough for me to take a shot? Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. can, there's there's three of them coming down. If you want to run out and just start shooting up at one of them, go for it. Uh, I will I will move and I will take uh, actually two shots at one of them. Okay, so you're gonna run out uh, and then take two shots. That's gonna be both shots at a minus two for the multi-action penalty. Sounds good. Uh, okay, my shooting is a D8. Come on, babies, let's do it. Uh, that is a double ace on one shot already. Nice. Nice. That's a good start. That's a good start. That's another ace on the D8. Well, that's a hit with a raise. Whoa. I don't know if I should keep rolling it. That is a hit 16. with a raise. Yeah, definitely. Um, so you are going to roll the damage for your gun and add an extra D6. Okay, should I do that first before resolving the other shot? Uh, yeah, definitely. Cool. Uh, so this is the first shot. Uh, that is six plus two. So that is nine for the first shot. Nine. Okay. So you uh, run out and piercing one. I don't know if that matters. Fire off a shot. Uh, it won't actually, because okay. demons are uh, all but immune to normal weapons oh. in the real world. But here in the spirit world, everything that you brought with you is also part of the spirit world. Yeah. Just as you oh, now are. Sweet. Hell so your yes. bullet fires up into the sky and tears into its wing. It didn't do a whole lot of damage, but it did shake it. Okay, cool. I'm taking my second shot at second that shot. bad boy. Okay. Uh, that is at a minus two. It's only a three. I'm going to use nothing. That's fine. I got one shot on it. You have okay. so much extra credit here. I said I wasn't yeah. going to. I'm sticking to my, Ugh. sticking to my okay. guns. Okay. All right. And your second shot flies wide. Uh, the thing is now very focused on you, and now the other three know that there are more figures here. Cool. All right. Bring it. Adelaide, you're up. Yeah. I mean, shooting it seemed to work great. Let's do it. Let's shoot an another one of them. Do it. Do it. Do it. Okay, uh, so Adelaide, you pull out your gun and you try and take a shot at the same one that Calvin hit or a different one? Uh, oh man, I'm gonna go after a different one. Okay. Just to start, or go well, is, is the one that he shot? It's shaken. Okay, I'll shoot that one. Okay. I'll shoot that one. Ooh, I aced it. Nice. Hell yeah. Seven. Seven will hit. Yeah. Not with the raise, yes. unfortunately, but you so do roll damage. Okay. We get a gun gang up. We both got guns. Shooting demon birds. Come on, everybody. Yeah. A gun up bonus. Uh, <laughs> uh, sorry, oh, a bang up it. bonus. Oh, uh, well, um, 14. No. no, 15 damage. 15. Ooh. All right, Adelaide, you see uh, Calvin strike it and it kind of throw it off course. It seems like your guns can actually do something here. So you come out and stand right next to Calvin. And just as you have done so many times before, you show him up with a much better <laughs> shot than the shot that he just tried to make. Calvin can only hit Sawyer with a gun. <laughs> and you fire directly into this thing's open mouth and you see black blood shoot out the back of its Ooh. head as its wings collapse and it falls lifelessly to the ground in the stadiums. The other two shriek and zoom down at you and Calvin. Okay, but uh, I, I like, I loosened it for you. So like, you're welcome. Next uh, round. Yeah. Ron, 
two of hearts, yeah. which is a joker. Oh, wait, that's great. Yeah. I forgot. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. One Benny for Ron, one Benny for Calvin, one Benny for Adelaide, and one Benny for Sawyer. Yeah. Hell yes, hell yes, hell yes. Calvin. A two of diamonds, what? which is also a joker. Joker Whoa. city, baby. Holy crap. Now he's gonna roll the real joker. joker. Oh yeah, baby. Oh my god. A Benny for Ron, a Benny for Calvin, uh, a Benny for yes. Adelaide, and for Sawyer. All right, wow. next. This is Adelaide, eight of clubs. Okay. Sawyer. Wait, what was mine? <laughs> What a third Joker! A Joker for Sawyer. Look at this! This is the best round we've ever had. Oh my a Benny God. for Ron, a Benny for Calvin, a Benny Holy for Adelaide, 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 and a Benny for Sawyer. We are going off. We are going to Vegas this, tonight. Can I have a Joker? Happens. You got an eight of clubs, Adelaide. Uh, they got <laughs> a three of diamonds. Oh wow, that that blows. Wait, can I just draw again? Oh my God, do it, do it, do it, do it. Look at Benny. You want if it's four jokers, to draw again? Yeah. We auto win if it's four jokers. Yeah. Uh, okay. I said the rule over. Sure. <laughs> Should I not? I'm confused. No, I love this idea. An eight of hearts. Okay, keep going, uh, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep uh, going. No. I mean, sure, I'll take the eight of hearts. It's technically better than clubs. It is. Goes earlier. All right, so um, any of you who got jokers, uh, Me first. which are Me first. Ron, Calvin, and Sawyer, you can go at any time. Otherwise, <laughs> it'll be Adelaide, but I heard Calvin first? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna take two shots at another one of these bad boys. Okay. Uh, so there are two remaining, uh, and you're gonna take two shots at one of them? Yeah, unless well, the first one kills the first one. Obviously, I'll switch to the other one. No, you, you gotta aim, you gotta fire off your what? shots before you do the multi act. Yeah, if you're gonna okay, do a multi action fine. penalty, you gotta choose targets first. Okay, fine. Then I will shoot one of them twice. Okay. All right. So uh, the multi action penalty is offset by the bonus from your Joker, so you are making a normal shooting roll. Wait, no, it's better to shoot each of them once. I'm going to shoot each of them once because the damage bonus. I forgot about that. I'm going to do that. Okay. Each of them once. So I'm going to shoot the first one here. Uh, that is a five. A five. It, yeah, a five. that hits. It's a good Okay, cool. Just a second. Uh, I'll roll the damage for that. Uh, that is really crappy, but not terrible. You it do is... add two to it. Oh, right. Yes. Uh, so that is a six. A six. Your bullet flies up at it. Uh, do you want to keep that uh, damage result or re-roll it? Uh, I'm going to keep it. Okay. Your bullet flies up at the thing and pings off of its leathery scales. Uh, you must have shot at a stronger joint. You're not entirely sure what happened. Okay. I'm going to shoot the other Second one. Second shot at the other one. Uh, that is a seven. A seven. Uh, yeah, that hits. I'm gonna roll some damage. Ooh, that ace. So 10 so far. Yes. Uh, plus five, 15, plus one, plus three 16. is 18. 16. 18. Nice. 18. Yeah, uh, yeah that's, a, that's a fair amount of damage. Uh, cool. Not one to let Adelaide show you up for too long, Calvin. <laughs> Fire off one shot, which goes, uh, does not really do much to the one that it hits. And then taking your time, you side up another one and knock that flapping beast out of the sky. Well done, Calvin. That is another Boom. one down. <laughs> so wait, how many are left now? Two. Uh, one. No, one. one. Sorry, one. one. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so next this. up would be Adelaide, unless either Sawyer or Ron wants to go first. If Are they within uh, flicky fireball range? Uh, they are swooping down. They will be on their turn if you want to hold and, or well, you don't have to hold. You're a joker. You can just interrupt <laughs> at any point. I, I will just set up that if they get within range, I, I plan on fireballing. Okay. Fireball. So am I going there? Go for it. Okay, I'll you. shoot it. Shoot that one. All right, real quick question. Uh -huh. uh, what's the uh, ammo capacity of these guns that you brought with you? They're handguns, right? Probably so at like most, 100. 12 shots? Seven. Mine's a revolver. Mine says There's seven. Six. I have a Colt 1911 is the best I can find. That'd be the closest. I have a revolver, so I assume six. 45. Revolvers don't always have six. I don't oh, think it. Do you it, actually have a, you bought a revolver? That's what yeah, he, it's a, it's a, for yours? It's a, it's a Smith and Wesson or an SMW. Right. Yeah, you says. got six shots. Uh, so you got three left by my count, Calvin. <laughs> no, and two left. I've shot two, I've shot twice, two times. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, so you're right. You got two left. Uh, Adelaide, you have um, six. Six left, I think. 
Okay. Uh, sorry, let me write that down. Six, seven. Okay. Uh, okay. Shooting. Mm, can I have a reroll? Yes. Some scary bird outside. Oh, I'm gonna reroll with the bunny. Do you have any bennies left? Yet. Ha. Dang. Uh -oh. I'm gonna reroll one more time with a bunny. Okay. Dang. Five. Five is a hit, Adelaide. Roll damage. Oh, yes. What guys? One of those die. Twelve. Twelve damage. Twelve, Twelve. Twelve damage. Uh, as the other one screeches and flies down, Sawyer prepares his lighter, and Adelaide stands up and sights it and takes another shot once more right through the mouth. The blood flies out the back of its head, and it too, its wings wrap around it as it falls plummets to the ground and explodes into the stadium. Yes. They are all gone. Hell yeah, that's how we do it, team. But okay. as that happens, you all look around and notice that there are other figures and flying creatures and hopping little things that seem to have heard the sound of this altercation and are turning your direction. What do you want to do? Ron? Sorry. I need to is, is Rosa, like, conscious again? Oh, yeah, is she good? Uh, she's on the ground, but she has, she has stood back up and is starting to walk, trying to walk down uh, the stairs, down towards the field. He's calling. It's beautiful. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. Hey, Rosa, Rosa, no, 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 come on, stop. Can I pull out my cell phone and just pop the earphones into Rosa's ears and just start playing some music? You pull out your cell phone and the screen is dark and dead. Fuck. And you cannot get it to turn on. As Rosa continues to walk down the steps, she is moving into a thicker throng of meandering creatures, and you are all feeling very, very exposed. What are you going to do? I'm gonna run down and grab her. Okay. I'll go with Calvin. Well, well, yeah, let's let's grab her and then is there somewhere we can go? Like, is there a hall we can duck into that's less exposed that we can like, like get a out dugout or something? something? Well, she's already down these steps, so let's take it one step at a time. Calvin okay. and Adelaide are running down to try and grab her. Uh -huh. Yes. All right, uh, Adelaide, I'm going to say you're supporting Calvin. So can I get a support role from you of mm -hmm. athletics? I'm assuming. Oh yeah, okay. Five. Five. Yeah. All right, so that's going to add a plus one to your roll, Calvin. Give me athletics. Okie dokie. Oh, that's an eight. An eight. Okay, that is a success with the raise. Going after Rosa. She aced it on the D8. Rosa, why would you do this? She got a nine. Uh, oh, come on. You go down to grab her, and Adelaide, you run down too to try and help Calvin. You both grab her by the arm and she just pulls her arms away. No, you can't stop me. I'm here. Don't stop me. Don't touch me. And she just starts to scream. And as she does, the sound around the stadium just starts to die down like dominoes falling through the stadium. The quiet moves all the way around until the only sound are the screeches from the flying creatures above and slowly, all of the monstrous, demonic, misshapen, and lost faces in the stadium turn up towards the four of you and Rosa. Hey. And you see the tall, shining obsidian figure on the field at the foot of the Titan. You still can't make out its features, but you see it turn and point up at the four of you. Will all four of you give me a notice roll? <laughs> uh, I got a 10. 13. 13. Uh, a four for Calvin? 10. 10 for Ron. 12. 12 Damn. for Adelaide. So uh, that is a success with two races for Adelaide and Sawyer a success with a raise for Ron and a success for Calvin. Calvin, you just see this stadium focused on all of you. 
Ron, you see the spindly thing in the corner on top of the cage has scuttled over to face you and is perched on the edge. Sawyer, you see that it extends one of its long pointed fingers down and just points to the cage. And at the same time as Adelaide sees it, you do, Sawyer. The screaming, anguished, tortured face of Spirit Lauren in the cage. And then there is an assembled shriek as all as one, like some dark perversion of a stadium doing the wave to support their team. The creatures in the stadium surge towards all of you and begin to move and lope your way. What are you all doing? Adelaide, Yeah. I will say, as you see Lauren's face pressed up against the bars of this cage, which now that you're closer, appear to have been constructed of bones and teeth, you see her push her face up against the edge of it, and she just looks up at you with a look full of meaning that you cannot discern, and that red pulsing energy begins to pump all around you with the beating of your heart, begging you to release it. What do you all want to do? Uh, so Adelaide is loyal. It's not her major hindrance, but... It's a main one, and this is already a little bit of like throwing all caution to the wind. So she's going to react to that pulsing feeling. Okay. And try to release it in favor of helping Lauren. All right. What are the rest of you doing? I think Sawyer um, is just going to turn and go, We've got to run. Uh, I, we're, we're spotted now. We need to make, it's time for action. We've got to stop something. We can't something. fight all of these. We've got to get to a better position. They will kill us. You don't have time to discuss. A stadium full of demonic creatures is now springing and flying and swooping and crawling your way. I mean, Adelaide's focused on Lauren. I know what you're doing, Adelaide. Okay. Ron wants to stay and fight. Sawyer is running. Calvin. Uh, I'm going to still try to pull Rosa out of there. You're still tugging on Rosa's arm and she is screaming and fighting with you and pushing against you, reaching out towards the field and the shining, smiling figures down below. And as this is happening, as a stadium full of demons turns towards all of you and you see a dark wave of death and destruction bearing down on you too much, too much for all of you, impossibly difficult. You hear shouting out from behind you. Hey, you demon sons of bitches! Come on and get some! And you hear a shotgun being fired up into the air, turning around behind you, pouring out of the hallway. You see figures running, and at their head, Jackson Green with his shotgun held aloft and his trench coat flapping, and right next to him, the unmasked form of Paul the Runt Chubacabra, his Saliva running down his face as he assumes battle stance, his spines extended. And behind them come more people from Pine Box. Ooh. More familiar faces that you have helped over the years. Right up behind Jackson, who comes running over, gives you a wink and says, we're buying you time, get down there and do what you need to do. And then just starts unloading shotgun blasts at the demons around him as Paul leaps out and raises his claws down savagely upon them. Glenn Mack comes up from behind and spares a moment to look at each of you sheepishly, eyes full of shame, and says, well, better late than not at all, I suppose. And he nods and undoes his necktie and wraps it around his hand as a large, dark, furry beast looking for all the world like a dire wolf with just a touch of Scottish Terrier comes trotting up next uh, to him. Glenn Max speaks a word and his necktie blazes with white light as he begins to whirl it. Argyle, come! And he <laughs> runs down the steps of the arena, slashing out with his tie and blinding demons left and right. Behind him, poor Sonia Alvarez, 
bracelets flashing into the night, knife held aloft as she rushes into the demons. They appear to be spreading out all over the place, trying to spread the forces and buy you time, buy you one path down below. And Sonia looks over to you, Adelaide. What, you thought you were the only ones prepping for the end times in Pine Box? Kind of. smart, Blackwood, and leaps down <laughs> into the fray. Behind her comes Detective Bishop, uh, badge swinging rapidly on his chest as both guns are blazing full force into the assembled demons below them. Paul Vanderhorn, the owner of the LARP and the Seekers of Danger, and Renee Billings, your friend who helped you out, come wading into the fight, dressed up in some sort of mechanical LARP-style armor, holding these strange, worrying weapons that look like steampunk LARPers wet dreams and just start <laughs> tearing into demons. Woo! I knew we were training for something. Eve? Nikita comes yeah. rushing out. Yes! Tear up. <laughs> Two axes held in each hand. You will not hurt Nikita's friends. Angry demons! And he leaps up, tears his shirt in half as he does, and falls into the fray of demons, just swiping with axes left and right. And last comes Dan Freeman in full sports gear with yes. three other members of the Swords of Adam, all dressed up with bats and cricket bats, just rushing out and he stares over at the three of you and gives you a nod as they too rush out into the assembled force of demons. A path has been made clear for you all, down the steps, down to the field below, but in the midst of all of that, Calvin, Rosa was swept away from you. What do you want to do? Wait, okay, before we go down this path, I have to say, Ron looks like Captain America. Do you want to say the line? Let's go. Oh, come on, Ron. We <laughs> Ron hasn't seen that movie. He shouts just... <laughs> and runs down, uh, I assume. What do you guys think? Man, doing? it looks like all of Pinebox assembled here. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Adelaide's running. Doing us dirty. Yeah, we're going. We're going. Yeah, let's go. Use the advantage we have. Okay, all right. They, you run down to the field. Where are you heading for? Adelaide, I assume you are heading for Lauren. Yeah. What about the rest of you? I think, I think Sawyer would also probably try and go towards the cage. All right, Sawyer, remember, you have the orb. That's and true. it does appear to somewhat weaken demons caught in its light. It makes, it lowers their toughness. Good, oh. good. Just gonna, we, I'm just we, gonna be clear with it. it. Makes them less tough, you said earlier. We figured it out. Well, in, in that case, maybe Sawyer would try and head towards the, the creature that's been making the demons. You're gonna run down towards the shining knife-like obsidian demon. The obsidian thing with the four arms, the right? Uh, no, the no. four-armed demon is the titan holding the obelisk. <laughs> Right. Fight okay. to write this There's down. a lot of demons here. It's a <laughs> lot to keep that. track of. You're Obsidian going... demon making demon. Okay. Oh. Obelisk demon has four arms. Obsidian demon does not. What about the rest of you? Uh, is Rosa heading to the cage? Rosa, you've lost sight of her. Lost sight of her. Crowd. Okay. Then I'm following. Oh, shit, you guys are going two different places. I'm with Addy. Well, okay. Right now, everyone is just rushing down the stairs onto the field, but you didn't see Lauren. Only Sawyer did and Adelaide. So okay. I don't know if anyone knows quite what Adelaide is doing, except for maybe Sawyer. So you're following Adelaide down the stairs. Well, can, can we like yell out our plans to each other as we're going down? You definitely can. But first, I want to see what everyone's plans are. Ron, what are you doing? <laughs> Uh, I am going to uh, uh, rush towards the uh, obsidian demon. Okay. Um, keep in mind, those colorful lines above you grow ever closer to the tip of that obelisk. You all shout out what you're planning to do as you run down the stairs. Adelaide, you have three seconds. She doesn't shout it out. It, it's She's just so preoccupied. Just I focus. Really she does. Sawyer. All right, I'm gonna go for the thing that's making the demons. Ron. I, I've got your back. Calvin. I got, I got both your backs. All right. <laughs> and you rush down towards the field and back into initiative order. Can I have a joker now? Let me bring out a new deck since we drew three jokers from that last one. There's four we, in this one, so get, it's possible. We only got to again. use one of those jokers. <laughs> I know. Don't worry. There's gonna the be plenty of time. Yeah, we did get As the you bennies. hear 
as you hear the sounds of combat breaking out from all around the stadium, you see flashes of light and spurts of blood and hear hisses and cries of pain mixed with the all too human cries of pain coming from those who have come to your rescue. Ron Tagoth Stevens, a two of spades. Damn it. Calvin, a four of diamonds. Oh, come on. Adelaide, okay. a queen of spades. Well, Sawyer, either a king of spades, okay. an ace of spades, or a nine of hearts. Be that ace, baby. Ace of spades for Sawyer. And let me just get my ducks in a row here. Oh boy. Yeah, there's a lot of wild cards on the field. <laughs> or the thing in the corner. A king of clubs. For the shining, tall demon like an obsidian knife. Either a ten of spades Ooh. or a five of hearts. And it will take the ten. Just give him a name. And for the rest of the assembled demons, oh God. a seven of spades. Uh, we'll call him the corrupting one. How about that? I like that, that a lot. Wow, that's a okay. cool fucking okay. name. Yeah. Sawyer, you're up I'm first. Get, I would like a exchange mine. Oh yes, like, yes. Would anyone is, like to redraw this? This is a token. Yeah. I was gonna say, right. What is that? <laughs> Ron the only is, thing I had. is going to spend a penny to redraw a card. Ron, yeah. a nine of clubs is what you Great. draw. Better than a two. Would anyone else like to redraw? Sorry, Calvin. No, I'm good. No. Okay. Then. Sawyer, you're up first. Okay, so how how far can I get like towards this this creature? Uh, well, first you have to run uh, your your basic first turn. If you're trying to get down to the field towards that thing, you're gonna have to spend two rounds just running. Then I'm gonna oh, run. Shit. Okay, and I I'm not gonna make you make a run roll because we're doing this abstractly and we don't have a grid. I'm just gonna say if you spend two rounds running and that's all you do, you'll be able to make it to the the corrupting one. Okay, in that case, I'm just gonna run because no new information has like happened that makes it seem like I should react. Sure. So. All right, so Sawyer is running down towards the field. Uh, next up is the thing in the corner. Adelaide, it sees you just running down uh, towards it and it's impossibly wide smile just stretches even further. It is going to go on hold as it extends long spider-like fingers and crooks one to welcome you towards it. Yay. <laughs> Adelaide. Yeah. You're up and this energy pulsing through you. We haven't dealt a lot with your blood edge, but it works a bit differently here in the spirit world. Would you like to let your cursed blood out, Adelaide? Yes. Adelaide, as you start running down towards the field and you see this thing smile and beckon you, anger and rage just clouds your vision and that red pulsing light grows even stronger as you reach out and you see an aluminum stadium chair, a little bit rusty and raw with exposure to the elements and extend an arm and just scrape your forearm intentionally and firmly across the jagged metal, opening a gash of blood that runs down your arm. Adelaide, you take a level of fatigue. Oh boy. Okay. And that red energy pours out of your body, out of the wound that you have opened and coalesces all around you, burning like a fire of blood centered around your hands and up curling over your head like an aura and you feel ready. Adelaide. Yeah. You have freed your cursed blood. You can make an occult roll uh -huh. that will serve as a shooting roll. Ooh. Ooh. You can also make fighting rolls that will deal additional damage. Nice. Okay. And now cool. that you have done that and you move down towards the field, what would you like to do, Adelaide? Uh, I, well, how far am I from the thing? Um, you're about, uh, you're just getting close to halfway down the steps. You're still quite a ways away, but you feel like if you wanted to, you could throw 
this power outwards. Oh yeah, I want to do that. And I just want, I'm just running at it. Like I'm just, I'm just like, no. I, I yell at this thing, I go, come at me, you son of a bitch, which is really crazy for Adelaide to say. And she wants to whatever. Yeah. The blood she flames feels- around your hand and you scream that and prepare to throw it back. And the thing stands up suddenly to its full spider-like height and reaches out a hand and says, Stop. It's going to try to interrupt you. Uh oh. I am going to spend a point of extra credit to re roll that. Come on! See what you guys are doing! I aced on the wild die. It makes it exciting! No, it ruins my cool moment! <laughs> Adelaide, it got a nine. You need to succeed on an opposed athletics roll and beat Athletics? Oh, come on. Can't I use smarts? <laughs> no. <laughs> Aced it. Nice. nice. Yeah. 10. Wow. Ten. Oh. Ten. Nice. Thing. That's all See you need. That was? <laughs> it reaches out a hand and croaks for you to stop. But Adelaide, this thing didn't stop you before and it's not gonna stop you now. Can I get an occult roll from you? And because yes. of your range, this is going to be at a minus four. Whoa, okay, a minus four. Think of this as long range for your shooting hands. Minus five, right, with fatigue? Oh yeah, oh, minus five with fatigue. Fatigue, fatigue. Solid dark. Uh, can I have a re-roll? You may. Oh, I aced it. Hell yeah, baby. Oh, fuck, I aced it again. <laughs> oh. oh, wow. Uh, uh, 16, no, 18. 18, no, 17 with fatigue. Right? 17. No, 17. 17. Yeah. They hit with a raise. Roll damage, Adelaide. What is my damage? With my- a raise, it's going to be 3d6 damage. Oh, is Pretty this good. my gun damage, or is this just... What? This isn't the same damage. No, I this is not a this okay. is not a gun. Yes, I aced it on one of them. Yeah. 13. 13 damage. 13. Nice. So it reaches out its arm and croaks for you to stop, and you just pull your hand back and fire it forward, and a burning glob of blood flies down, sails through the air of the stadium and strikes it squarely in its chest. And Adelaide, it staggers backwards and clutches at itself. And you see hissing wounds that have opened up, burning on its chest. It is shaken and wounded. It's a good start. And it looks up at you and its smile falters. But now <laughs> was it will do much. what it tried <laughs> to interrupt. As you continue to march down the stairs, hands held out aloft, it says, You escaped me once before. Never twice. And holds its hand out again, and you feel its fingers probing in your mind. Oh. Adelaide, can I get a spirit roll at a minus one from you. Uh, is that my fatigue? No, that is not your fatigue. So with okay. your fatigue, a minus two. Uh, oh. Um, six. Six Yeah. is a success. Nice. You feel your body start to slow as its, <laughs> as its energy pierces through your brain, but you fight it off and focus in on your pure pulsing rage and continue to march down the stairs. And its arm lowers and it looks back behind it as though very concerned. I feel like Carrie at the prom. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> Next up is the corrupting one. And it just stares up from the feet of this Titan at all of you coming down and just turns back to the spirit at its feet and not looking away, lifts it up, kicking and screaming. And you all see the face of Paul Riggin, the one that that originally sent you down 
to the basement to meet the thing in the corner, the one that fought you at the pool and tried to kill you. This is the screaming soul of the actual Paul Riggin. And as it ah. never breaks its gaze from you, that dark pulse fires up its arm and Paul becomes deformed and grotesque and falls to the ground and the corrupting one just shoes it up your direction. That is his turn. Goodness. Ron Stevens, you're up next. Uh, I'm going to spend, I'm going to give my buddy Sawyer here uh, a plus one to his parry because we're running together right now. Yay. Uh, and just run. I'm running towards okay. this thing that just is running towards us, I assume now. Uh, which, the, the, the loping? The, Paul. Paul. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, so you give him a plus one and you're going to run? Yep. Okay, so standing, staying near Sawyer with your shining spear held aloft and trying, I would assume, to stay within the blue light cast by the eye that Sawyer is also holding. It seems to help, yeah. You continue to run down the steps of the stadium. The assembled demons. Uh, let's see. Two of you are going to get an attack. Okay. Uh, and fittingly, it is Ron and Sawyer running down at the head of the charge. Uh, swipes of claws and crooked tails and kicks of taloned feet come at you from all sides as you make your way running down the steps. Your friends are distracting most of these creatures, but not all of them. And you both are going to get an attack against you. Sawyer and Ron, a five. What is your parry? My parry is a five. With plus, bonus? Is with that five, with the plus five, one from Ron? No, it's not. My parry is a six now. Ron nice. is the best. And Ron, <laughs> what's your is parry? That, does that, uh, my parry is a nine. Is that with the plus one from the spear? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Good God. So they start to reach out and claw at you. And Ron, you see one snaking out towards Sawyer and take the butt of the spear and just break it out of the way while Sawyer cries, look out to your side. And you duck under another slash that comes at you. You both continue down towards the stadium. Well done, Calvin. Yeah. Uh, Is my turn? It's Calvin's turn. Does the protection oh. add to toughness? The protection adds to toughness. Okay. Remember, you all Remember have a plus two to your toughness as well. Yes. Oh, yes. nice. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was okay. Uh, cool. I'm gonna keep up, keep pace with uh, the boys here and uh, move forward with them. Okay. So all right. So you're running as well. Yeah. All right. You run down behind them. That is the end of that round. Next round, Ron. Joker. Hell yeah! Ah, yeah. <laughs> what a day. Come back, Lin's, Lin's cap token. Lin's cap, <laughs> Benny. One more Benny for each of your stacks. It looks like this last care package from the Alumni Association is really doing double duty for you all tonight. <laughs> this is great. Calvin, a 10 of clubs. I'll take oh. it. Adelaide, a king of diamonds. Ooh, I like it. So you're either a seven of diamonds, an eight of hearts, or a six of diamonds. Oh, oh man, that's a really bad set of draws for me. It is. Um, I'm going to... Oh, uh, I'll take the highest one for now. The eight. The eight. Uh, for the thing in the corner. A three. No, not a three. A seven, much better. Okay. For the corrupting one, either a jack of spades or a two of diamonds. Uh, but that's, oh. take that joker. Take uh -oh. oh no, don't take that two, take two, no. Oh, but it does <laughs> take a joker. Spaghetti. And that means I get a Benny. And so too do each of my wild cards. You deserve it. You're working hard. Hey, so, so your so wild like, cards. No, not, in this, there. not in this current Where moment. You're you're not. <laughs> but like Jackson me, my wild cards. And, and for and... the rest of the demons, a jack of hearts. Would anyone like to spend a Benny to re-roll their card? I sure would. Oh, shit. Sawyer? Mm -hmm. All right. Let's find your pile here. There we are. Sawyer. A four of spades. Uh oh. Um. Pretty much everything was ahead of me except the thing in, in the uh, what you call it? The thing in the corner. Except in the thing in the corner. It's so I'm actually yeah. gonna take the four. You're gonna take the four. Mm -hmm. All right. So Ron, you can go at any point. Otherwise, Adelaide will be up first. Okay. 
Go for it. All right, I'm still running at this thing. Okay, so Adelaide, you are now going to run down towards the field. So yeah. you didn't uh, you didn't run last round. You were you had to move so that you could uh, stop right. to to cut yourself. But when now I you can said run. Run. I'm okay. Do I need to run? Am I that far away? Uh, you are. If you ran this turn, you would be within close range of the thing in the corner, which means you could fire off your your blood with no penalty. Um, and every time I fire off that blood, I'm going to take a fatigue, right? No. 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 Your fatigue was only to let it out. Ooh. Welcome to the spirit world, wild cards. Hell yeah. Okay. <laughs> this is a good place to be. Uh, okay. Calvin cuts his arm open. <laughs> oh, oh, not like that. <laughs> Uh, yeah, um, so if I were to just move my full movement and then try to shoot again, would I still have that same, what, negative five? Your full movement? Yeah, just uh, a normal movement, not uh, a If you just move, uh, you would be at a negative two to fire it, so a minus three altogether. You'd be in your medium range. Let's do that. Okay, so Adelaide, you just continue just moving steadily down the steps, like Terminator, almost, uh, just moving inexorably forward. Molten and you're going blood. to fire again? Yeah. And once more, you summon up your energy to the other hand this time. Give me an occult roll that's going to be at a minus three with your fatigue. You don't scare me anymore. Uh, minus three. That, uh, let me have a re-roll. You got it. Please. And now I think is a good point to point out that uh, Doe Jersey would like to give one point of extra credit to the players. So I'll yeah. just put that Thank back you. on the stack. Hell yes. Okay, I'm going to re-roll with a Benny. Huh? Re-rolling with a Benny. Okay, that's a four. A four is a success. Oh, okay, so that right. will do damage, Adelaide. 2d6. Ten. Ten. Ten damage. Uh, oh, God, where'd he go? One moment, one moment. I've got so many stat blocks in front of me. Um, <laughs> 10 is a hit. Uh, however, I'm going to spend one of his bennies Ooh. to have him unshake right before uh, that happens. I should have done that last time anyways because I did have him act. So spend that Benny. You hit him. And once again, it splashes into him, but this time he's ready and holds up an arm. It strikes the arm and he shakes it in pain. He is shaken, but not wounded. Nice. Marf. Marf. Next up uh, will be the assembled masses, unless Ron wants to go. I, nope. I've got All right. Ready. The demons around you swipe out again. Striking once more, uh, Ron and Sawyer as they huh. as they continue to run down the steps. So, Ron and Sawyer, it does. Wow, I keep rolling a one and a four on d4s, and then the <laughs> exact same number on these d6s. Um, it's just like the scene just keeps going the same way. That number is bad, though. So I'm going to spend one point of extra credit for each of these attacks to reroll them. Oh, hot. That's slightly better. Uh, <laughs> I am pretty sure a three does not hit you, correct, Sawyer? No, it doesn't. And a five is not going to hit Ron Stevens right now. No. So, they miss. As you continue to run down the steps, the demons screech and cry out in frustration as you elude their grasp. Next up, Calvin. Um, so... Am I within range to shoot uh, this uh, corrupting one? Uh, the corrupting one uh, is on the field. Did you run last time? I did. I ran. You uh, did. Yes. Uh, you are within long range of him at this point. OK, can I move and then shoot? Will I be in uh, mid range at that point? If you move, uh, are you going to run or just move? Just move one and then to If you move, range. yes, you would be in mid range. OK, and there's a negative to that, right? For my negative gun, two. Or? Negative two for mid range. Yeah. Then I will do that. I will move and then. Actually, shoot. no. I'm sorry. He's in the middle of the football field. Yeah. Uh, and I said two rounds of running. Uh, so you, unless you ran this turn, you would still be in long range. He's further okay. away than the thing in the corner. So you can run gotcha. and be in medium range, but it'll be the same penalty because you'd have minus two for running. So either take okay. a shot from long range. Or, or run and shoot. I'll run and shoot, so take the, okay. the multi-action penalty. So you run down the steps directly behind Sawyer and Ron, 
and fire off a shot as you do. So that's going to be a minus four altogether for you. Let's see what this thing does to crazy looking demons. Let's go. Uh, that's an ace on a d6. Nice. Uh, that is an eight. Uh, minus two, you said? Minus right? four. Oh, minus four. So it's still a four. Yes, a four will hit. Roll damage. Okay. Sweet. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Uh, that is eight damage. Eight damage. Armor piercing one, if that matters. Armor piercing one. Um, okay. It does actually matter. <gasps> cool! Um, you fire a shot. A wild shot as you run down the steps, just crying out as you do. It lost in the din of the battle around you. And your bullet flies down and pings off the shoulder of the corrupting one. And he takes a step to the side and looks up at you. Oh, uh, yeah, but you felt and it, you right? you see his black ebon eyes darken. He is shaken. <gasps> I shook him! I shook yeah. him! I win! I win the game! I did it! You won. You won. Next up uh, will be the thing in the corner. Uh, unless, oh, you know what? I forgot. The corrupting one got a joker as well. Let's have him go now. No! Uh, oh, no. He's going to unshake, first of all. Splagoosh. All right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He unshakes. <laughs> and Calvin, you see his eyes shining down on the field making direct eye contact with you, and you feel your self, your perspective, suddenly brought flying, rocketing out of where you are until you are just mere inches away from his face. And he just points into his eyes, and you look into the reflective black, and you see yourself burning and writhing in a lake of hellfire. Can I get a fear oh roll from you at a minus four? Okay. Fear of spirit, correct? Correct. Okay. Okay. Uh, that is a, uh, 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 it's minus four, but I have plus two because I have strong willed. So five. Five is a success. Just Calvin. Oh! You see yourself burning in its eyes and then you're back looking right as, at its <sighs> face and it cocks its head to the side and smirks as your consciousness jets back into your body up on the stands, still running down, and it's all you can do to keep your balance and not pitch forward and roll down the stairs. You gotta do better than that. I got lit on fire. First day of school. <laughs> uh, as you shout that out from up in the stands, the thing just reaches out into the air next to it, and black smoke coalesces into the shape of a flaming multi-pronged flail, which it snaps down onto the ground of the field and holds its arms wide. Some kinky shit. Uh, <laughs> the thing in the corner will be next. Uh, it is shaken by your attack. It does have to roll to unshake. Which it does. Uh, uh, this I'll tell you for free. Demons, much like undead, uh, are very hard to keep shaken. Mm -hmm. And again, it stands up to its full height as you march down the stands towards it, and it holds out a hand again, this time joined by another, and says, Stop! Can you give me a spirit roll again, Adelaide, at a minus one? Minus one. Is that including my fatigue? No. Minus okay. two. That's a four. Again, Adelaide, you <laughs> succeed on your spirit roll and yes. continue to move down towards the cage that this thing stands atop of, inside of which you can still see Lauren's panicked face pressed against the bars as swirling spirits fly behind her. And it lowers its hands from the top of the cage and its smile fades entirely, leaving its, its face impassive and blank. Sawyer or Ron? Um, Ron, you've got the Joker. Sawyer, you've got uh, your calculating edge on the table. So we both still have to run to get to it, right? Uh, you have to yeah. spend this second 
turn, yes, running down. You're basically at the bottom of the steps now. You now have to run out onto the field. So if I take it a double action and run and then do something, can that? Can I do that? Uh, if it's a ranged uh, thing, you with can. With my, you can, what you call it? Uh, with your lighter? Yeah. Okay, yes. Uh, you can run and do that. You would be activating your lighter at a minus two. Uh, unless so. you'd like to go first. Uh, no, go for it. Would, so uh, the other question I have is, would Ron be able to run and get within range? Like, could I like support him in so that? So if all you do is run this turn, yeah. you can make it over to that thing. But if you're going to use your, we're, we're basically, we're, we're using theater of the mind here. Sure. Uh, you spend your whole turn running, you can make it there. If you want to run and do something else, uh, you're not going to be able to get uh, quite close enough. So Ron can run and close to melee with this thing, or uh, he can do something from range, but he can't make a melee attack against against it this turn. Okay. Well, would you so like did, to go first, Ron? Although or? he did draw a joker. He did. So I, I have this image in my mind of us like running down and launching a fireball and then Ron like running in after it with the... The that's what, yeah, stuff. that's basically what I was going to do. So I okay. say, you use I think we're on the same page. How cool Then I'll be, say, right? uh, yeah. because that sounds cinematic and cool, that with your Joker run, uh, that little extra plus two, which doesn't ordinarily add on to your run roll, will be enough to get you there. Yes. Okay. okay. So Sawyer will just run, you know, at, at probably holding the the orb and ha has his uh, lighter in the other hand and he just runs down as close as he can to the thing and then just flicks the lighter and throws a fireball at it and then just spins off to the side to let Ron like keep going to actually get to it. Give me a spirit roll at a minus three, Sawyer. Okay. Ooh, minus three now. Come on, Sawyer. Um... All right, that was a nine, which is a six. Uh, a nine, which is a six, which is a success. So you yeah. flip I mean, the lighter yeah. open, spin the <laughs> wheel, and shoot a jet of flame out yeah. towards yes. the corrupting one. Will you roll damage, please? Yes. Ooh. Wait, why was it a minus six, three? Was it because we're in the spirit world, or were you adding on multi-action? Multi-action. I have calculating. Uh, OK, it was at a minus one, then. Sure, in that case, I rolled an eight. An eight, which is a success with a raise, an important distinction. So yeah, yes, <laughs> 3d6 damage. <laughs> okay. Solid catch. Yeah. Well, that's why I picked the four. All right, okay, so I rolled 10, but one of them was an eight, so. Hell yeah. Oh no. All right, that die hit the ground. Have to keep it, have to keep it. I'm rolling one of these. Okay. Uh, so that's 12, 12 damage. 12 damage. Oh, uh, the one that was on the floor is a six again. You, oh. your fire shoots out from the lighter and engulfs the thing and it staggers back under the force of the flame. And as your flames vanish, you can see little bits of charred flame around its body. And it nice. looks up at you and cocks an eyebrow. You have shaken it. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Shaky bros. And then, up from behind you. Well, I, I like to imagine it's looking at me and then I just sort of like jump to the side and suddenly it's looking at Ron. Yeah. And Ron stands there, golden spear held. So as the, the fireball like disperses, Ron leaps into the air and spins with the momentum to launch the spear at this thing. Whoa. And, and, and the, spear, the spear. Yeah, the spear goes through the fireball Okay. That's just, that's just a cinematic look to it. The right. trapping, oh, if you will. What, uh, but, so you what? leap, yeah. nope, cinematic trapping. It's a football play. I love you, it. He's throwing the football. You leap up into the air and just fire the spear off like a javelin through the disappearing jet of flame. So as the corrupting one looks up and cocks an eyebrow at Sawyer as the flames dissipate, it sees a golden shining spear flying through the air directly towards it. Make an yes. athletics roll for me, Boy, Ron. I want this to work so bad. Oh, okay. God, I want this to crit a billion times. That would be amazing. Also, so Ron, has... Ron, just before you make this roll, let's get your <laughs> let's get your penalties assessed here. Okay. 
so you are going to be at a minus two for the multi-action penalty here since you ran and then used this, which your joker invalidates. Right. So unless you have anything else to add, it's just going to be a flat athletics roll. Yeah, let's just do flat athletics roll. Okay. Okay, uh, that's a four. Um, I feel like I can. You got those uh, d sixes on your side too. I I I do. Um, uh, give me just uh, give me one extra credit. One extra credit to reroll. Double ace. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Well there done. Is. <laughs> and Hell yeah. This this guy's a demon. Do you get bonuses? Uh, no, I get, I, I get basically, <laughs> I, for Demon Slayer, I get to add plus two to fear, uh, tests from demonic influences. And also, uh, any weapon I use is considered a magic weapon. Neat. So, um, yeah. Um, which it uh, already so, is. So which it already is. Magic. So, yeah. And it's got plus so, six already. So pretty good. That's a 11. An 11, Ron, with a thrown weapon. Uh, is a hit with a raise. Hell yes! Yeah. So, Ron, will yeah. you roll your strength plus a yeah. d6, plus a yeah. d6, plus six, plus two? Oh my <laughs> god! Yes. Strength, so... strength plus two d6 plus eight. Holy shit! <laughs> okay. Knock him out of the park, baby. Okay, I aced it on one. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. So that's uh, eleven plus. Six is 17. Uh, 28. 28. Yeah. 28 20. damage? 28 damage. 28 plus eight. damage. Yeah. Wait, can I add my conviction to, to a damage roll? Um, you can. I don't recommend it. Okay, I won't. 28. <laughs> Ron, you leap down the stairs and throw De La Garza's cross, and it goes sailing through the cloud of fire up towards this thing as it sees it just a moment too late and stabs it directly in the chest. And as it stops, it reaches out a hand and grasps the shaft and starts trying to pull the spear out of its chest, but already cracks of golden light are spreading out through this thing and it grabs with another hand and starts trying to pull the spear out and then looks up at you, Ron. And with a final wrench, it pulls the spear out and explodes into a cloud of blackness, yes! dissipating from the field and leaving the spear to drop to the ground. But Ron, as you look, you see that black cloud coalesce again up in the stands and the corrupting one reappears up in the stands, grasping its chest and sitting down, breathing heavily, but still staring down at the field. It seems that you have taken him out of the fight, but it does not appear it's going to be that easy to destroy this thing entirely. Okay. Somewhere at graduation, like like from a trance, coach has got to be like, that's good, Steven. <laughs> As that happens, you all hear a voice shout out from behind you. Sonia Alvarez says, pay attention to the ley lines. If they cross, this is all for nothing. Don't get distracted. Next up, new round. Ron, a two of spades. Oh, dang it. Calvin, a three of spades. What the fuck? Adelaide. A nine of diamonds. Sawyer, either an eight of spades, a seven of clubs, or a four of diamonds. Yikes, not a great set of choices. Um, I'll go with the eight. Eight. For the thing in the corner, a 10 of clubs. And for the assembled for mass of demons, a four of spades. Now, as you are now down here on the field, you realize you are standing next to the impossibly gigantic foot of this titanic demon. And you see the base of the obelisk about three stories in the air above you as it stru struggles and groans to hold its weight. And you see the ley lines up above in the sky getting perilously close to touching as more and more flits of starlight and dusk 
begin to appear in the sky above you. The convergence is almost upon you. Would anyone like to spend a Benny to redraw? I would. One for Ron. Ron, not a two of spades, a king of diamonds. I would also like to. Sawyer, not an eight of spades, a five of clubs. I'll go with the five of clubs, actually. Five of clubs. Uh, I'll redraw as well. Calvin, not a three of spades, but a four of clubs. Hey, one up, baby. Moving on up. Everyone else good? That would be me, and yes. All right. <laughs> well, I have to ask me, too. I have to give myself time to think as well. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> Zuko also does not want one. Good. You know what? I'm going to spend one and redraw for the assembled mass of demons. Why not? Four you of spades. Hey, eight of clubs now. You Slightly did it. better. Ron Stevens, you are up first. Uh, I'm going to try and grab the spear. And then I'm going to make my way towards the obelisk. All right. So you rush over on the field and grab the spear. The obelisk is way high up in the air above you. The only oh, it's, thing it's like floating. It's not floating. It's being oh. held up in the air. It, it will not touch the ground. It is being held aloft by the giant uh, four-armed titan. We've got to kill make this it, thing. Yeah, I make it to this this thing. If Am I right there? Can I, like, attack I now? Mean, you can be in many places on the field and be right next to the titan. Right. <laughs> it is a gigantic form. Really? Um, you are literally, I, Adelaide said this earlier, you are like an ant to it in size. Sure. Um, and you have the spear. Yeah, even ants can sting. Um, I'm going to take the spear and just... I would stab give you it. a Benny for that if I did that <laughs> in this game. <laughs> and I will stab it into its foot. Okay. Now, before you do that, would you like to go on hold and wait for Sawyer? Or would you like to go ahead and do that now? I ask because Sawyer has the orb, which oh. lowers the toughness of the Yes, right. Uh, thank you. But for... you can also just go ahead and make that now. Sawyer doesn't go until almost the end of the round, and a lot could happen between now and then. Strategy, it's strategy. Hmm. Uh, I'm going to give it a shot, and I'm going to try and stab it. Okay. All right, Ron. You take the spear, you pull it up in the air above you, shining with a golden light, and try and bring it down onto the foot of this titan. Give me a fighting roll and add plus four to it because it's super hard to miss. <laughs> okay. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, that's a that's a seven. A seven. You miss. <laughs> Wait, that's with a plus four? That's with a plus four. You're stuck with a three? Yeah, I mean, uh, can I have a piece of extra credit to try and reroll yeah, it? Why not yeah, do that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a little better. Uh, that's a 10. A 10? Do you want to keep it? Uh, yeah. I See, I don't get my bonuses when I fight with a weapon. So. <laughs> oh. All right. Um, yeah, that's a 10. A 10. We'll clear its parry. Not that it's trying to parry you. It doesn't even right. seem to be aware <laughs> that you exist. Its entire being is focused on holding this obelisk aloft and finally completing its demonic purpose. It Makes seems sense. like this has been going on for millennia, and this thing is on its last legs. And now you're trying to take one of those away. You hit, <laughs> Ron. Roll wow. damage. Strength, plus a d6, plus six. That's terrible. May I please have a piece of extra credit to reroll uh, that? You may. Thank you. Define terrible. One and a two. Yeah, that's oh, a uh, that's an eight. Uh, I mean, an eight on an eight. And an eight. <gasps> that's an ace. Uh, and then another one. So that's uh, 16. Yeah. 16 total. 16. Damn, yeah. Ron's going to solo this dungeon. Ron, you, <laughs> you pull the spear back and jam it down as hard as you can into the foot. And it sinks in just a bit. <laughs> like, a, uh, like a splinter might. And you hear... Yeah. From way up above, a very low. Ooh. 
Well, that's you horrifying. Have, you have shaken it. Oh! Hey! Wow! Yeah. wow. <laughs> that's incredible. All right. Next up. Uh, the thing in the corner. Oh, yeah. It is shaken, I believe, uh, from your last attack, Adelaide. So it is going <sighs> to attempt to unshake. Okay. It does. It uh -oh. unshakes. And leaps down off of the cage and putting all other pretense aside, opens wide its maw, no longer smiling, its face stretching open further and further and further as it just rushes you, Adelaide, its long arms extended. Uh. Here in the spirit world, it can do much more than just hurt your spirit. Here, it can end your body as oh. well, and it rushes up to slash twice at you. Uh, it is going to be uh, taking a running penalty for getting up to you, and it is also wounded, so all of these attacks are going to be at a minus three. Do we have oh. any kind of pluses to our parry? I can't remember. Can't... Uh, no, just to your oh, toughness. Okay. I am going to spend a point of extra credit to reroll all of those. Really though? Do you want to really though? I do. <laughs> I aced on one. This is how it always goes. Nine mm -hmm. minus three uh, is a six. What is your parry, Adelaide? It's a five. So it comes rushing up the steps at you, just bounding and scraping its body up as it comes leaping up over the seats and descends upon you, raking one clawed hand across your face. That is going to hit. Uh-oh. I'm gonna spend a point of extra credit to re-roll that. Ah! Oh, ha ha! That is also just awful. I'm gonna spend one of my GM bennies to re-roll that. Oh my Use god! Those resources to kill me. I'm gonna spend one of its bennies to re-roll wow. that. Wow! Yeah. It really doesn't like you. Listen, this I've good. intimidated it finally. If he's using all those resources, that's good. That's good. Four re-rolls, nine damage. What is your toughness? It's a seven. Is that with the bonus yes, from the tea ritual? It is. So Adelaide, you are shaken. As it slashes across you, you just feel a little sparking of magical energy just rushing up to fill the gap between your flesh and its claws just briefly enough for you to come staggering back, flesh intact. You are shaken, but you are not wounded, Adelaide. And that is its turn. And Adelaide, it is now your turn. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm gonna, now it's come at me, right? Oh yeah, it's right next to you. So do I have a sense with my magical blood demon in energy here, um, what would be more, what, what is likely to do more damage to this thing between punching it or shooting it? All you feel is rage, Adelaide. I'm going to try to shoot it again. But if you shoot it in melee, you have to clear its parry. Am I in melee? No. Yes. Oh, then I'll then I'll punch it. Okay. Uh, first, you have to unshake, though. Right. And that's bigger, right? Spirit. Oh, like me. Cannot remember. Spirit. Shakespeare. God damn. One day I'll remember. No, I won't. Shakespeare. That's good. Shakespeare. That unshake you, spirit. Shakespeare. Shakespeare. What? Okay. <laughs> Uh, that's an eight. An so eight? Yeah. And, oh God, other book, an eight. Uh, an eight will clear its parry. Oh. Wait, 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 that was to unshake. <laughs> oh. No. I, well, I was like, why did you That information is free. You unshake. <laughs> <laughs> now yes, I him. will attack it. Give me a fighting roll, Adelaide. Oh, fuck yeah, I aced on both my die. Uh-oh. <laughs> I hope you get an eight. Um, that is... <laughs> it's about to be a puddle in the corner. Ten! Ten? Yeah. Ten will clear its parry. You're like, ten will not clear its parry. <laughs> like, the numbers are all wacky. I've altered the stat block. <laughs> pray I do not uh, alter it further. Yeah, it. Well, how much damage do I do? It says uh, fighting roll deals extra additional damage with... Uh, with what? Blood magic. Yes. So what is your normal unarmed attack? Uh, are you, do you have martial artists? No. 
Uh, so it's just strength then is your normal unarmed attack. Um, with this oh, power yeah. flowing through you, uh, it is going to be uh, strength plus a, uh, this is your melee attack. So strength plus a d6 plus two. Nice, okay. Can I re-roll out? With uh, extra credit? <laughs> yeah. You may. You guys only have, I don't know, 20 something points of extra credit. <laughs> yeah. Hey, don't thanks even need alumni them. association. Yeah. 13. 13 uh, is a hit with a raise. Uh, <laughs> you shake it and deal another wound, Adelaide, as the blood boils over your fists. It encases them and starts to harden as you pull back and just hammer blow after blow into the middle of this thing, using all of the training that Ron uh, and you woke up all those early mornings to work on. You hammer its center of mass, and the thing in the corner is pushed backwards, damaged, and reeling. Two wounds and shaken. Next up, the assembled demons. The corrupting one from up in the stands just raises one hand and dark light starts to pulse from it. And Wait, every question. What did the assembled demons get? What was their card? An eight of clubs. What? An eight of clubs. Oh, okay. I thought they had some different. They did. I redrew. They used a Benny. Oh, right. Okay. Uh, he raises his hand and dark energy starts to pulse from it again. And all of the demons around you screech and turn towards you away from your allies who are still fighting all over the stadium and focus in on the four of you. Everyone is going to get an attack this time. Oh, oh boy. Hey, oh, never mind. Ron. Yep. Uh, that's an ace on a d6. Nine, does that clear your parry? Whoa. It just meets. Uh, nine will meet your parry. So, shit, Ron. Fine. I will spend a point of extra credit to reroll <laughs> that damage. Oh no. As an ace. Uh, 14 damage, Ron. Oh, man. What is your toughness? 10. 10. Oh no! And that's yes. with the tea ritual, right? Yes. Okay, so that is a hit with a raise. You will be shaken and wounded, Ron. Uh, uh, no, I'm going to spend a Benny. Spending a Benny to soak. Soak City. Make a vigor it. roll. Hey, spoiler alert, folks Eight in chat. Minutes. We're going to go long. <laughs> <laughs> That's a seven. A seven yep. is a success. You shake it as an imp, a little small gibbering thing comes flying down out of the stands, uh, claws outstretched and teeth gnashing. You take the butt of the spear and just bat it out of the sky and it goes sailing off in the other direction. Sawyer. Oh, that's not going to do it. Um, I'll spend a point of extra credit. Okay. It's better. Uh, three won't clear your parry, though, so we'll move no. on. Calvin. Yeah, come at me. Uh, five. Uh, my parry is six. Well, then that will not do it, Calvin, as you also not. duck under the blows and swipes of the demons from the crowd around you. Adelaide, you are backed up into, into a crowd of uh, grasping hands which reach out and try and grab you and pull you down. It's an ace on the d6. Uh, uh -oh. 11, what's your parry? Five. Five? Yeah. That's gonna be a hit with a raise, Adelaide. Yeah. Mm. Oh no, that's two aces. Oh, come on! Uh-oh. 18 damage, Adelaide. What's your toughness? Uh, a seven. And that's with all the bonuses, yes? Yes. So that is a hit with a raise, with a raise. A hit with two raises. You okay. would be shaken and take two wounds. Okay. I will try to soak it with a Benny. This, this one is bigger, right? This is bigger. Okay. You have only two Bennies remaining, Adelaide. Yeah, um, no. <sighs> you don't have any wounds right now, right? Uh, Not yet. No. Okay. Hey. Can I get a reroll? I got extra four. credit. Yeah, you got it. Well, technically, I got three. I guess. Uh, I got a four. A four, which is a success. You soak one of the wounds, Adelaide, as you bring your hands up to cover your body, but claws and teeth bite and tear at you from all sides. You push yourself out of the crowd and turn to face the thing in the corner, now bleeding and scratched and a bit the worse for wear. You are shaken 
and wounded Adelaide. Isn't bleeding helpful though? I mean. Uh, not not in this way. This is not controlled bleeding. Come on. <laughs> All right. Uh, you killed your fatigue, right, Addy? For that? Yeah, I did. Okay, cool. That is it for them. Next up, Sawyer. Okay, so Ron is like at the demon and he stabbed it, right? So I want to run over to him and just like take the orb and just hold it out to the demon. And then can I like support Ron by like grabbing the spear and helping him like jam it into the thing so his next attack roll? Like support his next attack roll? Yeah, so what I'm gonna say, uh, I love that idea. If you support his roll, when he brings the spear down, you're essentially ready to hammer on the haft right behind him and drive it further into the creature. That's you exactly hold what out, I'm thinking. You hold out the orb. And as the blue light of it spills over the foot of this titan, its scaly armored skin seems to weaken and become a bit more translucent in the light of the orb. So you are just there and you're gonna make a support roll, yes? Uh, so it doesn't take an action to just have the orb there, right? It Correct. just automatically does it. Yes. In that case, I wanna also just try and like throw a fire thing at it. And then, so, so I'll be doing double action, but I okay. want to do the minus, I, I want to negate the minus two penalty on the the support roll, not on the, the fire roll. Okay, all right, so make your support roll first. Okay. Uh, and that's just gonna be, I think, fighting support. Uh... I, so I, I'm, I'm gonna use research on this one. Okay, <laughs> you're gonna use your edge? I, I saw something about uh, like, I don't remember. It was it, I, I. I just I knew something about anatomy, so I, I'll help him like uh, go for the where the Achilles tendon would be on this thing. That's okay. how I'm justifying it. Okay, you point it out and tell him that you plan to help him out right behind his yeah. his blow with the spear. Make okay. your roll. So my support roll is a seven plus. Uh, this is going to be plus three because I don't have anything to do my research with. That's ten. Um, but yeah, ten. Success with a raise, Ron. You're going to get a plus two on your next fighting roll against this creature. If you do not do a fighting roll on your next turn, you do not gain the bonus from support. Okay. And then Sawyer, as you do that with the orb held aloft, you flip your lighter and shoot it upwards. Get a little bit of hot foot. So Roast minus it, three. Uh, yes, minus, minus one to activate, now. minus two for multi-action. Uh -huh. Give me spirit. Uh, give me a reroll. One point of extra credit. I aced on the 10. It's way better okay. than crit failing. So that's that's a 15, which actually makes it a, a 12. A uh, 12 is a success with a raise, Sawyer. Roll 3d6 damage. <laughs> yeah, let's burn this big old motherfucker. Uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm going to re-roll that with an extra credit. If you got it. Mine. So 10 is the starting, or is what I had. And uh, this is, so that's a 13. 13. Your fire blows up and just rushes against the uh, the shin, the bottom of the shin of this gigantic titanic demon and doesn't seem to do much of anything at all. Well, that seems fair. Wait, wait, you have the orb held out, right? I do, and it's already shaken. It is already shaken. So I am going to spend one of its bennies to have it automatically unshake. Uh, not automatically, I have to roll for it. No, no, I will. I'll have it automatically unshake. Um, and it is shaken again by the by the spurt of, of flame. It appears to be uh, distracted or irritated, um, but you can't tell from way down here. But it is shifting somewhat restlessly, and the obelisk is moving in its grasp. And from out in the stadium somewhere, you hear Glenn Mac shout out, Good! Keep it up! Well, Calvin. if Blue Mac wants us to do it, we probably shouldn't. <laughs> oh, God. Um, so uh, when when Ron stabbed this thing, did he pull it out, or is it still in there? He pulled it out. OK, cool. Now what I want to do is go up to where they stabbed it and just shoot point blank my gun into the, the hole that he made with his spear. OK. 
All right, give me a shooting roll. Okay. This is near the orbs. My gun is magical and super powerful. And this is the last shot in it. Yes, yes it is. Yes, it is. I did write that. Uh, okay, shooting roll. Here we go. Uh, that is a five. A five? Yes. That'll hit. Cool. Uh, that is nine points of damage. Armor nine piercing points one. of damage. Armor that piercing matters. one. You fire at it, ding, and the bullet just shoots off into the uh, into the crowd. Okay, yeah, that, that didn't work. And time. as you do that, Calvin, you hear growling from around you as all of those misshapen, despoiled spirits that the corrupting one had twisted and changed had st have started to circle up around you and Calvin, sorry, Calvin, Sawyer, and Ron. Okay. Uh, there are now about six of them circling up around you and moving in to keep you from doing what it is that you are doing. No jokers were drawn that round, so same deck. Let's go. Come on, Joker City. Ron, let's do it. <laughs> a two of diamonds. There yes, it is. We called it. <laughs> a joker. Oh, oh my God. It, One, Benny. Four. Each of you. Calvin. A ten of hearts. Adelaide. An ace of diamonds. Ooh. Nice. Sawyer. Either a queen of clubs, a king of clubs, or a three of clubs. <laughs> I guess I'll go with the, the king of clubs. King of clubs it is. For the thing in the corner, an eight of hearts. For the despoiled spirits, a joker. Uh-oh. Oh, come That's on, man. That's terrible. That's six attacks. That's, That's terrible. For my pool, one for the thing in the corner and one for the titan. Wow. And yeah, six attacks at a plus oh, two. That's uh, real bad. And uh, that is it for cards. The Titan does not get one, for he just stands. Um, so first up would be Adelaide, but I'm going to go ahead and have these things around all of you uh, rush in. So that is six despoiled spirits. That is two on each of you. Okay. Wait, who of us got a joker? I did. Uh, Ron. Ron did. So Ron, you could interrupt them if you want. I can't interrupt all of them though, right? Uh, no. Just the ones well, by yes, us. yes, you could interrupt you could interrupt all of them and go first. However, since you both have jokers, you would have to make an opposed athletic roll as normal. I mean, so, you could your athletics all the way, buddy. <laughs> Do you want um, to You already got the bonus from Sawyer, so. Yeah. Um okay, yeah, let's try it. All right. Athletics roll. Athletics. Um you are interrupting them, so give me yours first. Um, Don't forget to add the plus two from your Joker. I mean, they'll be adding theirs, so it's functionally not helpful, <laughs> yeah. but still. Yeah. Um, can I get the uh, uh, the D6? Yeah, my card? Yeah, extra effort. Yeah. You want to add that D6 roll to any trait roll. This is a trait roll. So yeah. you want to interrupt them. You got it. Yeah, add a D6 so, to that roll. So right now I have a six. Okay. Well, that was terrible. I'd like to re-roll all of those. I have an okay. eight right now. <laughs> One point like of extra to re-roll. Go for it. Yeah, that was a lot better. Okay, ace on a six. Nice. 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 Yeah. Um, uh, nine. Nine. Okay. Keeping it? Yeah. Is that with that's the with, D6 added? That's with the plus two and the D6? The, the, I re-rolled all of them together. Oh. And you added plus two? And I added plus two. Yes. Okay. Um, I'm going to spend a point of extra credit to re-roll theirs. You're going first, Ron. Yeah. Oh, we did it. Okay. Nice. Um, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to try and attack this, the, the beastie thing again. I'm That's not going to try. Only, that is the only thing you will get the support roll from Sawyer on. Yep. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to do that. As you see these despoiled spirits closing on around all of you and rushing up to attack, you decide to just keep going. Give me a fighting roll at a plus four, plus two, so it's a plus six altogether. <laughs> oh God. Plus six altogether? Wait, Correct. also Joker. Yeah, that's, what? yeah, so it's plus four to hit him with a plus two from the Joker, plus six altogether. And plus, yeah. plus two from Sawyer. Uh, yes, yes, plus two from Sawyer. <laughs> oh yeah, plus God. eight. <laughs> 
I'm like, we're not losing any pluses. <laughs> that's a that's a twelve. Twelve. Uh, twelve is a hit with a raise. Yes. Hell yeah. Roll damage, which is going to be strength, plus two d six, plus eight. Oh my god. The toughness is reduced. Uh, yeah, that's true. Oh, I could do way better than that. Please give me a reroll. <laughs> Extra credit to reroll. Uh, let's see. 14 plus 8 is 22. 22? 22. 22. 22. Uh, 22 is a hit with two raises. Ooh. Ooh. Nice. And it, it is already shaken. So you pull the spear up and once more drive it into the foot, trying to hit that same spot, seemingly more brittle and frail under the light from the blue orb. And as you do that, as soon as it makes contact, Sawyer leaps up from behind you and just with both hands shoves down on the haft of the, on the, haft of the spear, driving it further into the thing's foot and golden light bursts out from there. And you hear the thing way high above moan this long, tenorous whale song of pain that just shakes the ground all around you. It has two wounds and is shaken. Yeah. Oh, yeah, uh, We're just gonna not die, like, this turn, which yeah, is okay. gonna be real hard. Yeah, that's true. Now come the rest of these things. Uh, let's get those attacks on you guys. Uh, this is going to be two attacks on Ron. I'm gonna spend, oh man, uh, I'm gonna be spend- You're plus two from that Joker. I know, I'm gonna spend a point of extra credit to reroll one of those. Seven. Uh, no. Nope. Gang up Perry's, bonus. Perry's a nine. Uh, but your friends are nearby. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna miss. All right, they come up behind you, but you release the spear, Ron, and just blow back to parry their, their, uh, their attacks. Uh, Ron is down. Uh, Sawyer, you're up next. I will spend one point of extra credit to reroll one of those. I, I don't still get the parry bonus from Ron, do I? No, that's just once per turn. Yep. I believe, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that is going to be a seven on both of them. Sorry. My parry's a five, so that's two hits. Nine on both of them with the Joker. So that's going to be two hits with two with raises. raises. Oh, God. Wait, isn't our, Wait, no. isn't our, yes. oh, our toughness is raised, not our parry. Yeah. 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 All yeah, right. So nine. Um, okay. One of them is going, uh, well, no, actually. Uh, both of them, they they reach out and they don't tear into you, Sawyer. As soon as they get hands on you, they grasp onto you and you feel their grip tighten. Sawyer, uh, will you make a spirit roll? Yeah. This is opposed. You are trying to beat a nine. And is there any yeah. um, modif modifications? Nope. But you are going to make two of these, one against each of them. Yeah. One for the each of you. OK, uh, can I get a reroll? Yes. I got a seven. I have to beat nine? Nine. Hard. I aced on a d6. I got a nine. I have to a beat nine. it? Nope. You just got to meet it. Yes, nine. So that's one. Nice. You feel you feel your energy and and your vitality being pulled in two different directions out of both of your arms. You manage to wrench your arm free of one of them. Give me another spirit roll. You have to beat another nine. Come on, Sawyer, you got this. Uh, I need another reroll. Got a five, and this is only a three. So I have a stack of bennies. I'm gonna try. Uh, use one of them. All right. Uh, one more Benny. One more Benny. Uh, damn it, I got an eight, but it's not quite enough. Okay, one last Benny, and then then I'm giving up after this one. All right. It should leave me with four Bennies afterwards. Yep. Hmm, damn it, it's just the six. So I got an eight, so I failed by one. All right, Sawyer, you try to pull your arm away from the other spirit, but it latches on and you see it just open its mouth, no teeth, just gums and start gumming into your arm and you feel the wet slickness of the insides of its mouth running oh, down God. your arm 
as your vitality begins to leave you, you take a level of fatigue, sort of. Oh, oh no. Oh, Calvin, it's... two for you. Okay. All right, I'm going to spend a point of extra credit to reroll one of those. Okay. Nine and six, Calvin. Uh, those both hit me, actually. All right, then I need a spirit roll. One against the nine and one against the six. Okay. So let me know which one you're doing it against first. Okay, I will do the nine first. Give me spirit. Uh, that is a seven. A seven. Uh, uh, this is against the nine, right? Hang on a second. I have to check if strong will works against this as well. Plus two to, when resisting any opposed smarts or spirit based rolls. It's tests, isn't it? Smart when opposing. It's Opposes sparts or spirit-based roles, including tests and arcane skills. Okay, then yes, strong-willed would come into effect here. Nice. Excellent, then that is a nine. Okay, so the nine, uh, you too managed to wrench your hand, your arm away before you can be drained. Now I need one opposing a six. Okie dokie. Uh, that is a nine. Well, 11, I guess, with the plus two. 11? Okay, yeah. yeah. You managed to pull both arms away and shake these things off. Uh, that is it for them. Next up, Adelaide. Wow. Okay. I want to. Sh uh, if I were to try to shoot this thing again, what would the penalty be? You Being just have to hit its parry. Okay. Um, Which you don't yet know. Right. I will try to do that. Well, I mean, you do. I mean, you did fight it just then, so you kind of have an idea. But you're gonna shoot it. All right. Yeah. Give me an occult roll, Adelaide. Make sure I have the right die for this. I don't. Wait, aren't you shaken? Just die. Oh yes. Wait. First on... Yeah, I think I am. <laughs> Keeping track. Wait, you are? Uh, it, she took a wound last time, I thought. I did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, very important that you guys keep track of what you have because I, I cannot. Down. There's a lot. I just, yeah. It's hard to keep track of. Uh, uh, nine. To unshake. Yeah. Yep, you unshake. Still okay. wounded though. So remember your with your fatigue and your wound, it's a minus yeah. two to all of your rolls. Minus two, and then what is my other minus for? Oh, nothing. Right. Okay. Just gotta hit his carry. Uh, can I reroll that? Yes. That's a four. It'd be great if I wasn't right next to it. That's worse. Um, uh, I'll, I'll use a Benny to try again. Okay. No, best I got is a four. Not gonna do it, Adelaide. You keep trying to bring your arms to bear to fire off another glob of blazing blood, but as you do, the demons surrounding you keep grasping at you and throwing off your aim, and you just fire it wildly, wildly up into the sky and out I, of sight. Do I at least hit like one random demon and just take him out at least? No. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> Surprisingly though, the sky is thick with them. It misses every single one. Uh, wasted Sawyer. blood. Sawyer, you're up. Okay, um, uh, I, I think, uh, so th there's two demons that are around me and Ron, right? Uh, there's two demons on you, two demons on Ron. Okay. Two demons and, on Calvin. And remind me what my card was again? A king of clubs. Okay, I did not have, yeah, I didn't have calculating this time. Um, I want to try and torch the demons on Ron. Can I do that without putting Ron in danger? Yes. Yes, from 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 this, yeah, we'll say, we'll say that you can. Okay, so that's that's what I want to try and do. Okay. Uh, so spirit roll. Although you are making a ranged attack essentially against other uh, against people you're not adjacent to. Sure. So this will make you vulnerable. You mean people I am adjacent to. What's up? You mean people I am adjacent to. Just vulnerable. Oh, oh, right. But okay, yes, vulnerable. I think is fine. Okay. Um, all right. So rolling my spirit roll with the total of minus just two now, right? Because I just have one fatigue. Yeah. Uh, so that's a four. Can I get one reroll? Yes. Uh, okay. So that's worse. So I'll just take, I'll just keep the four. Four is a success. Uh, so roll damage. Okay, 2d6, 2D6 and, and it's gonna hit demons. It's gonna hit both of them next to Ron, actually. Hell okay, yeah. great. These are despoiled spirits near him, the corrupted spirits. Uh, that's six. Can I get a reroll? You can. 
You can do better. Come yes, on, way sorry. better. I rolled a 10 and one, of, and there's a six in that mix. So now nice. it's 11, which isn't great, but <laughs> I'll take it. Uh, 11 is enough to burn both of them to a crisp. The yes. demons, the yes. despoiled spirits around Ron go down flailing and burning. But you are vulnerable, Sawyer. Yeah, that's fair. Calvin, you're up. Um, now that uh, Ron is cleared of all demons, can I do what Sawyer did last turn and help him with the spear as a yeah, support but, roll? But first, though, don't you think it's a pretty high tension moment? Yeah, I guess it is. So I guess maybe it is. we should get that roll for your hangry, huh? Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that first. Okay. Uh, it's a spirit roll. Yes. So at a minus two. Easy. Should be easy. Oh, this one's cocked. Uh, that is a six. A six is any other success. Minuses. You okay, feel cool. you feel the bestial hunger rising up through you, but you try and force it mm. down. You have to focus. You can't lose control right now. Okay, sorry. Okay, so I'm gonna help Ron with the spear this turn. The same thing that Sawyer did last turn. You're gonna support Ron. Yes. Okay. Uh, give me. Uh, I mean, fighting support. Okay. Uh, I got a seven. A seven. Okay. A seven is a success. You will add a plus one to Ron's fighting attack against this thing if he does that. Okay. I'm Sounds running. good. Um, <laughs> no. Calvin, as you prepare to do that, you look back around you. You see Sawyer burn those despoiled spirits, but you see ever more of them clambering down through the stands of the stadium and rushing out onto the field. At least a dozen more are heading directly your way. You are going to be overrun soon. Yeah, we, we, we got company. We can't do this forever. And then up from behind you, a voice. You turn and you see Olivia looking much different than she did the last time. You saw her gaunt and pale and haunted. One of her arms is gone, and in its place what appears to be a wooden arm that looks and moves just like a human arm should, and she is just sitting there. The word you heard was, hi. Listen, I know you ain't my Calvin, but I'll be damned if I'm gonna fail you again. And a gesture heavy with meaning to her but devoid of any for you, she presses two fingers to her lips and reaches out and just swipes them lightly across your cheek and then turns and stretches her arm out. And as she does, it morphs and changes into a long wooden blade. And she runs for the demons that are coming down the field and swarming towards her. I'll buy you time! And she just swipes at them, trying to keep them at bay. The thing in the corner is going next, Adelaide, and it just reaches out in complete blind rage and slices at you two more times. Oh yeah, Adventure oh. Time style sword arm. <laughs> uh, a nine. Oh, sorry, two wounds. It has a yeah, seven. Will that clear your parry? Oh. Yeah. Seven will hit. 11 damage, <clears throat> Okay, well, I have seven for my parry. So that would be a hit with the raise. You would be shaken and wounded. Oh my god. Okay, I will. I will soak it. All right. Vigor to soak. Come on, Addy. Don't forget your wound and your fatigue. Oh. Um, so that's six. Six is a success. So Adelaide, you bring your arms up and the blood just flows up in front of you and splashes up between the two of you, sending it startled back and its arms spread out in surprise. You have managed to avoid the blow. Nice. From all around you, you hear the screams and shouts of anguish. Now you hear more pain from your allies than anything else. The fight is rapidly turning against you and the ley lines up in the air above the stadium are almost touching. This is it, folks. Jokers were drawn, new deck. Ron Stevens, nine of spades. Calvin, queen of diamonds. Adelaide, five of clubs. Ugh. Sawyer, either a king of hearts 
a two of hearts, which would be a joker. Yes, damn or an ace of an ace of diamonds. Uh, I'll go with two. Yeah, two, two, the joker, two. joker. So a joker and a Benny for each of you. My yes. God, holy crap! Welcome I, back, Lens Cap. We've drawn six jokers today. This is nuts. It's I mean, wild. there's four of them in here, but this never happens. Uh, uh, Improved level the corner, headed is like a joker machine. For the thing in the corner, a king of clubs. For the rest of the masked demons, a ten of spades. First up. I'd like to spend uh, a Benny to... A Benny redraw. to redraw for Ron. Yeah. Ron? Yeah. How does an Ace of Hearts... Yeah, my man! <laughs> Would anyone else like to redraw? No. Oh. Nope, I'm okay. So not the thing in the corner. First up, Ron to Goth Stevens. <laughs> Ron's going to put everything he can into this, and he's going to run away. No, he's going to try and stab this thing again. Okay, uh. you, get a plus, you get a plus one from Calvin. Okay. The light of the orb still shines on the Titan's foot, Ron. I could do I could do better. Give me a re give me one extra credit, please. You got it. Come on, Ron. You got this. Come on, Ron. One good thrust. Ooh. Uh. Let's see. That was a the first one was a five. This one's a three. Um, should I just re-roll roll an extra d6 here by conviction? Yes. And then I think so. until it's a million. Yeah, yeah, right. Solid okay, plan I'm gonna roll. Never fails. I'm gonna roll, so I have a five is where I'm at right now. I'm rolling my conviction. That's with your attack roll? Is, is a five right now? Five, yes. Okay. With the plus one and everything. Okay. Dang. Add the conviction of you. That's only a seven. So I'm going to re-roll all of them with a Benny. With a Benny. Uh, okay, that's a little bit better. That's a... Oh, remember, remember, add four. It's huge. Oh, right. Yeah. Uh, okay, right. so... So you actually... I'm going to give so you that your That was Benny a 12, back. right? That was a 12. Uh, was an 11, that. I believe. 11. Uh, which is a hit, not with a raise, but it is a hit. Okay. So okay. Uh, strength plus so... D6 plus six. That was with my conviction, though, right? Yes, you had rolled yes. your conviction. Yeah, okay. Come on, Ron. Make this damage okay. roll count. Strength plus d6 plus d6. Strength plus d6 plus, d6 plus, plus, plus six. six. Strength plus d6 plus six. Come on, Ron. Come on. That's not making it count. May I please get an extra credit? Extra uh, credit to re-roll. That's only I four. believe you're down to an even dozen extra credit. <laughs> oh, okay. no. Use it like it's candy. Ace it on the eight. Okay. Nice. Ooh, yes. the eight. Okay, that's uh uh 14, 16, 22. 22! Yeah! <laughs> 22 damage. Yeah. Run. You grab the spear, jump up, and with the all the force you can muster. Ram it into the foot as Calvin comes running up and just slams down on it right after you, and you drive it deep into the flesh of the Titan. And as golden light bursts out from it, the foot of this Titan starts to crumble and disintegrate. And from way up in the in the clouds, you hear a bellowing roar. Every demon in the stadium goes silent and still, including the corrupting one, who's still leaning, breathing heavily in the stands, watches. You all turn your eyes skyward as the thing staggers backwards and smashes into the side of the stadium and releases the obelisk. Uh, we should... And as it falls, I need athletics rolls from Sawyer, Calvin, and Ron. Beat it. Let's beat it. Let's get the hell out Is of it here. still in combat? Uh, yes. So what's a joker bonus? Do I get yes, my joker yes. bonus? Uh, 11. 11 for Ron. Uh, I'm going to use a Benny to reroll. Benny for Calvin. I only have seven left now. Oh, I got a seven. Seven for uh, Sawyer. What'd you get, Calvin? 
Uh, hold on a second. Uh, I gotta use another bit. Oh, I gotta use, hold on. I have chosen, so I gotta do this twice. Hold on a second. Uh, that's a seven. Seven. As the obelisk comes crashing down, you all leap and dive out to the sides of it, and the earth shakes with the impact of it. But Adelaide, you are the only one up still to see the obelisk crack where it hits the ground and splinter up the middle. Jagged magenta and purple cracks race up the edge of it as it starts to fall piece by piece until it splits open entirely. And with a blinding purple flash that suffuses the stadium, the obelisk crumbles into rock as the Titan collapses on the edge of the stadium, unmoving and everything goes still and silent. As the ley lines above begin to move back like snapped rubber bands springing back to their places, moving across the sky, the four of you have stopped the convergence. Yes, Woo! we did it! Well done. Yeah. <laughs> In the silence of the stadium, all of the demons turn and look at the corrupting one. And he stands in the stadium, still clutching his chest and looks over at the four of you. And with a voice that you can hear both in the air and in your mind, he finally speaks and says two words with a shrug. Kill them. And from up in the stands, you hear Jackson say, Fucking run! <laughs> Combat is over, but every single demon in the stadium is now after you all. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's not good. Chases in Suede are a very visual affair, and because of the limitations of our technology, I am instead going to run this as a dramatic task. So, each of you is running your own individual dramatic task as you try and flee with a mad dash back for the portal, or will you, Adelaide? Lauren remains trapped. I also think that Sawyer knows that he saw Lauren in the cage and he knows that Adelaide is going for it. So he would probably try to like at least go help or convince her not to, depending on what the situation looks like. Five rounds. Uh, sorry, I said each of you. Each of you will be contributing to this. Five okay. rounds in a dramatic task. You need 20 successes. Ugh. Are you ready? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Let's do it. Ron. Three of clubs. Uh oh. It's a bad start. Calvin. Two of diamonds, which is yes! a joker. Oh, oh wow. yes. There's Hell a penny yeah. for each of you. Calvin, you will be making your roll at a at a plus two. Ron, Boy. a club is a complication. I would like to change that, but if you want to- Hold on, the Adelaide. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> a joke. Yes. Whoa. I just uh, want to let everyone know, there are a couple folks in chat who are doing a drinking game and they take a shot on crit fails and jokers and audio issues. Well, then they're, <laughs> they're probably <dying>. dead now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the audio issues alone would have killed them, but- Yeah. Uh, our care package was OP. <laughs> yeah, a little It's dead. awesome. Um, it's pretty great. Sawyer. An ace of spades. All right. Uh, so, Adelaide. Uh, I'm, sorry, I'm, Ron. You, said you yeah. said you were going to redraw. Yes. 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 Okay. Um, I actually lied a little when I said you were all contributing to this dramatic task. Uh, Adelaide, Sawyer, and Calvin. Uh oh. You need to get. 20 successes in five rounds. Ron, you're dealing with something different. So Ron, you're spending a Benny to redraw a card. Six of clubs better for you? Ah, uh, not much. No, no. Would you like to spend another Benny? 
Uh, yes, I would. Stand up for a second. Seven of hearts. That'll do it. it. All right. So, Adelaide. Yeah, 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 yeah. You have a joker. You can go first, but you don't have to. Uh, yeah, no, I'll go first. All right, Adelaide. You see all of these demons turn. They are no longer interested in defending. They're no longer interested in corrupting the other ghosts. They are only interested in killing all of the living creatures who have invaded the spirit world and undone their plan. You need to run. Uh huh. But Lauren remains trapped in the cage. Uh huh. What do you want to do? So, looking at that cage, is there like a lock? Like, what is it? It is just a large, ugly cage made of gnarled bones and teeth. It appears to be magical in nature, Adelaide. There is no door or lock. Okay. I want to run over to it. Am I close enough to get to it? Yes. Okay. And I want to, I, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm going to go to Lauren and say, I'm not going to leave you. I, I, I will get you out of here if it kills me. And I want to try to punch or kick the like bars and or pull anything I can do. To and try you're still and covered in boiling blood, Adelaide. So give, right. me, give me a fighting role. This will okay. be, be your role for the dramatic task this round. Aced it. Hell yeah. Oh, okay. That just puts me at a six with my negatives. Um, can I try to re-roll it? Yeah. Extra credit? Yeah. You got it. Oh, sorry. Let's move to something a bit more uh, appropriate. Okay. That's double aces. Hell yeah. Addy. Nice. Oh, okay. That's a seven. Oh, a seven, no. Which is one success. Uh, one success for the dramatic Should I task. Try to re-roll it one more time. I mean, it's do or die, literally. Yeah, I'll do, do it one I more time. Do I feel like it? <laughs> one more time with a Benny. Yeah. Aced it again. Hell yeah. yeah. Oh, it's a seven again. No. Oh, How does right that? Next. One success, Adelaide. It's negatives. You want to okay. keep it? Yeah, I'll keep it. All right. Well, still, roll damage for me because you did hit the cage. That counts as one success uh, for the dramatic task. Two d6 for the damage? Uh, it's strength plus uh, a d6 plus two. Okay. Uh, eight. Eight? Did you add, did you add your joker bonus in there? I didn't. No, oh. I didn't. Ah, so that's a nine. So that is a success with a raise. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, yeah. Thank you, chat. Yes, well done. And also, Adelaide, add an additional two points of damage to what you're doing. Ten, 10 damage. Ten damage. Yes. You pull back. Eight damage was not very good, Adelaide. Ten damage is enough. Your boiling bloody hands just make short work of the bars of this cage. You splinter them with your blows, sending bone chips and teeth flying off, and the cage springs open, and the spirits inside who were trapped come pouring out and immediately start tangling with the other spirits around. And Lauren floats up next to you and reaches out. Thank you, Adelaide. Thank you. Can you can you come back? I can't. Adelaide, I'm I'm already dead. But you've freed me from this hell. So thank you. And I can I can give you one thing in return. What is I, it? I can also buy you time. And she okay. she leans forward and just as you try and talk, grabs the back of your head and kisses you deeply, Adelaide. And then pushes you away, makes eye contact with you. And as you once again try to speak, she just smiles and puts a hand up to your mouth. And then zooms over to the thing in the corner and joins the other assembled spirits who have poured out of this cage that start latching onto it and pulling it into the cage of bone and teeth. And as it fights and tears and snarls, it looks at you, Adelaide, or at least you think you, it does. As it gets pulled into the depths of the cage, it says, 
not over. Never. And then it is cut off under the pile of spirits tangling with it. Do you turn and run? Yes, after a moment, yes. All right, that's Adelaide. Calvin, you also drew a Joker. You can go at any point, otherwise it's Sawyer. Um, I'm gonna say, yeah, bust ass, let's move, I'm running. All right, so give me an athletics roll, Calvin. Okay. As you all turn and run up the, f you're just trying to get off the field and up the steps. Yeah, okay. Uh, I got, oh, that's a seven. I'm gonna use a Benny to re-roll this. Okay, a Benny to re-roll. That's, uh, I think Chosen still applies here because it's a trait roll. Yes. Okay. Okay, cool. So that's a six plus two, which is an eight. A success of the race, two successes for you, Calvin, as you blow past the demons on the field, still reeling and a bit confused as they turn to chase you. You make great progress off the field and just vault over the sides of the stadium and up the steps. Sawyer. Okay, so Sawyer and Ron are still kind of uh, back there. I guess Ron's doing his own thing. Uh, Sawyer, you look around to make sure that Ron is going to come with you and Ron is gone. But in the madness and the chaos, maybe he already took off. Maybe he went running somewhere else. Okay, well, I'll, I'll in that case, since I don't see him and I saw uh, Calvin go running, I, I'm gonna run with Calvin. But a, as we go, I, I want to just be like, I, I wanna keep an eye out and find like which directions the, the hordes of demons are, like find openings, you know, be like, okay, that way. So I wanna try and use notice to help us get okay. out. Sure, give me notice. Ooh, waste on a 10, yes. Nice. nice. Okay, so that's a 14, uh, that's a 16. A 16? Ooh. That is oh. a success with three raises? Yeah. That is four points. So Sawyer yells out like, there's lots of them this way, let's go. Yeah, up there, there's a, there's a clearing on the stairs and you guys just take off. Mm -hmm. um, Ron, you were down there as the obelisk was destroyed, but in the bright purple flash, once it cleared, you found yourself miles above the earth, floating in the sky, moving upwards and towards a dark shape in this nuclear red blasted sky, what looks like a black cloud but it's rotten and dripping with grease and grime and you are being pulled up towards it. Can you give me a spirit roll, Ron? You will be making spirit rolls and this is to resist fear. Oh okay. Boy. This is my specialty. Um, <laughs> That's uh, sarcasm, which is Dom's specialty. No, I mean, I, no, I he, have he brains and guts brains. and... <laughs> oh, Is this demonic then, in nature? Then ignore my joke. No. Okay. Oh. That's fine. I, I still have lots of things, but okay. okay. I aced it on a six. Yes. Uh, let's see, that's 12. That's 12. 12? Yes. A success with two raises, Ron. As you fly up towards this cloud, you're not sure what's happening or where you are, but you just feel this intense, heavy sense of dread. That was round one. Next round, Ron. A queen of hearts. Calvin. A jack of hearts. Okay. Oh, wait. I need to do a new deck. We drew jokers. Oh, nice. Yes. Sorry. Forget that. Ron, a uh -huh. seven of hearts. Calvin. More chance for more jokers. A jack of clubs. Sweet. Adelaide, an ace of spades. Mm. Nice. Club Sawyer. Uh, this is a dramatic task, so you don't still get the benefits of, uh, of group level headed. Or, yeah. Level headed I don't believe right? you do for a dramatic task. I don't think so. So seven of spades. Okay. Uh, would anyone like to spend a Benny to redraw? Calvin, I will remind you, your card is a club, which will put you at a minus two 
and if you fail, there will be dire consequences. Then yes, I will redraw with a Benny. Sending one of Calvin's Bennies to redraw a card, a Queen of Spades instead, Calvin. Yep, that sounds good to me. All right, so first up, Adelaide. After uh, you make I'm... sure that the thing in the corner has been dealt with and that Lauren is going to be okay, as okay as she can be, you turn and run. And now you are just trying to make it up the stadium stands and avoid the grasping, tearing claws of the assembled demons. Yeah. Give me athletics. Oh, uh, uh, athletics. Oh boy. Okay. Come on, Eddie. You can do it. Mm. Believe in yourself. I... Oh. Did you already roll? Yeah. Okay. Then never mind. But I will say after this, um, each of you is going to be using athletics for all of these. But just like Sawyer did, on one round, you can use a different skill. Okay. Uh, can okay. I get a reroll? Yes, you can. Oh, I got I, it. <laughs> uh, that's an eight. An eight. Nice. Is yes. a success with a raise. Hell yeah. Adelaide, you just burn rubber up the stands. And as you do, you feel the, the boiling rage and the blood subsiding and, and it vanishes from around you, that pulsing red retreating back into your body, leaving you only feeling tired and wounded and afraid as you run up the stairs and away from the demonic horde chasing you. Uh, next up, Calvin. Okay, so Calvin is uh, probably at the edge of the football field at this point, getting onto the stairs, it looks like. Yes. So just before he gets to the stairs, he's gonna turn and be like, wait, Rosa, Rosa, are you here? Were you in that cage? Where so he's going to turn around and try to call for Rosa. As you do, a disfigured, loping figure comes moving up towards you, snarling and growling, the remnants of Rosa's familiar face no. visible on it as it moves in menacingly. Uh, I'm, I'm going to try and talk her talk her down if I can. Okay. Uh, Rosa, I... Give me persuasion after you say what you're going to say. Does it look like she's in pain or is it like she's been, like the, the uh, Whatever the one corrupting has... one did okay. to the other spirits he has done to Rosa. Okay, Rosa. Look, we don't, I don't know what ghost rules are, but I know that you, you're tougher than this. You're the, you're the toughest girl I know. I know you're in there. I can't, I can't do this without you. I need you next to me to get out of here alive. So come on, we, we got a ways to go. Let's do it. Give me persuasion, Calvin. Persuasion, is your student technically? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> she was a student when she died, so yes. Okay, I'll take it. Uh, that's actually not great, so I'm going to use a Benny. A to Benny to reroll. With chosen. This is a trait. Whew. Uh, uh, that's not great. I'm going to use one. Oh, actually, sorry, it's the best of two. That's an ace on a D10. Yeah! I'll take that. That's another ace on a D10. Yes! Keep Rosa. rolling. Save Rosa. Uh, that is 29. Yeah! 29. Yeah. Is a success with six raises, I think? Sure. I believe you. That math, that math works out. Um, she'll oppose. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> she aced it. Oh! As you start just saying this, you, you don't respond with violence or aggression. You just stop and calmly try and reach her. And the emotion and the vulnerability and the honesty in your words, Calvin, seems to give her pause. And she stops for a moment and you see distress flickering across her features and she says, Calvin, I didn't help, did I? You, you did. We're all alive. We're getting out of here. Come on, one last ride. Let's do it. 
I can help now. And with one last bit of her humanity remaining, she looks at you longingly for just one moment and then turns and leaps back into the group of demons that are rushing up after you. And you see them cover over her, tearing and slashing as she desperately tries to fight them off. Do not waste her sacrifice, Calvin. You turn and run. (sighs) Yeah. Shit. Sawyer. I think at this point, Sawyer's just got to keep running. Book it, Sawyer. Give me athletics. He's come up with a path, and now he's just got to follow it. Uh, All right, so I aced on the four. Um, So that's a five, six, but I have a fatigue, so that's just a five. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'll take one reroll on that. One reroll with extra credit. Oh, I aced on a six, so this is even better. Six, seven, eight. uh, So that's, it's a seven. It's basically the same. One success. Yeah. Keeping it? Uh, uh, you know what? I, I, I'll use a I'll use a Benny because I got a pile. Okay. Come on. Four. Four. <laughs> that is. That's a ten. A ten. All right. I'll a keep that with a race. All right. As you also turn and just run up the stairs, jumping over the demon's claws and biting heads as you move towards the exit, back up towards the elevator to the portal to freedom, run. Up above in the clouds, you are now hovering over this rotten, black, dripping cloud. And in your head, you hear, Give me a fear roll at a minus one, Ron. Uh, Okay, I actually uh, have gut, so that ignores two points of fear penalties, so no minus at all. Nice. Um, And that is a five. A five is a success, Ron. How many successes am I trying to get? Uh, you're trying to get eight successes in five rounds. Okay, and I have... Four right now. Four right you're now. You're halfway there. Great. Nice. Easy peasy. Uh, I do want to point out real quick, chat mentioned this, we looked it up, confirmed it, level-headed does work in dramatic tasks. All right, fantastic. Well, then this Ooh. round, it will work. Thank you very much for that, chat. Yeah. Ron, this is round three. Five of spades. Calvin. Four of spades. Adelaide, eight of clubs. Sawyer, jack of diamonds, or a king of spades, or a joker. <laughs> I want to redraw. I want to. Uh, you want to redraw. <laughs> okay, yes, because you have a club. So spending a Benny to redraw for Adelaide. A yeah. new card, six of spades. Okay, thank you. That's okay. good. Uh, Sawyer, you're up first. Now that you're up at the top of the stadium stairs, you can see all of the other people that have uh, that came to your aid, battered and bruised and bloody, but most of them, at least the ones you can see, still up, and they come running towards you. You are running down the hallway, back towards the alumni elevator. Give me athletics. Okay. And at a plus two, because you do have a joker. All right, okay. Um, so I'm gonna need a reroll, because I rolled a two. Okay. That's no point, no. All right, got a four, five, so that's a four, that's a six, because I have a minus one for fatigue. A six is a success. Yes, yeah, Sawyer just runs up with everybody else and he looks around, has he noticed that Ron is not, like he sees Adelaide and Calvin also running. There's too much chaos happening around you right now for you to, to be sure. You haven't seen him, but your guess is Ron is a, fast ass runner he's probably just ahead of you he'll probably be there before i am yeah i have great news for the three of you down here on earth okay you have successfully completed your dramatic task yeah as you make it up the stairs it seems like the the 
staggering amount of sacrifices that your allies have, have given in order to buy you time have indeed served their purpose. Olivia, Rosa, and Lauren have all indeed managed to slow them down, that together with the rest of your allies, to give you enough space to get clear. You all run through the doors of the elevator, followed closely behind by the other people who joined you on this crazy journey and start madly clamoring down the ladder to get down to the underground bunker. Ron, up in the clouds, the voice speaks again. Born. You have been prepared. I need a spirit roll at a minus two. So a straight spirit roll. Ooh, uh, that's a five. That is a success. <clears throat> As you all start getting down to the bottom of the elevator shaft, you run down through the Sweetheart Foundation's underground bunker, and that is when looking around, you realize Ron is not with you. What, 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 what happened to Ron? Don't I, stop, I, folks, go, keep going, get back through that I, portal. I, I, we don't know what? how long it's gonna last. We I thought he was leave ahead of me. Ron, we can't leave without Ron. Ron. Shit. All right, but as he's saying that, uh, some of the others who came down here with you are running through the portal, and you look over at it, and you see the portal is beginning to close and flicker, Fuck. and you see the bare wall beneath it, it doesn't look like you have much time. Your he, hour is almost okay. up. He might have run through already. If we stay here and we get stuck on this side, we're not gonna be able to help him, but there's always the potential that we can come back and help him. Adelaide, here. Adelaide, what? it's Ron. There's no fucking way he ran inside there without us. Look, look, I'll get everyone else through. You guys can hang back until the last minute, but you've got to get Fine. through this portal, all right? Ron can take care of himself. Come on. Go, go, okay. go. We'll be right behind you. Go. Jackson starts waving the others through as one by one, they rush through the portal and dive back to the real world. Ron. Six of hearts. Okay. You have been prepared, boy. Will you serve? Will you serve your purpose? And beneath you, the rotten cloud begins to move and shift. And you see a giant circular mound in the middle of the cloud that looks like one giant eye beginning to open its lids. Ron Stevens. Will you give me a spirit roll at a minus three? Minus one. Uh, can I get a piece of extra credit, please? You may. Ah, damn it. All right, using a Benny. A Benny to re-roll for Ron. Aced it on the six. Yeah. Hell yes. Uh, dang it, so close to another one. Uh, oh man. That's a seven. Um, I'm going to re-roll it again. Okay. Okay, seven's as high as I'm going to get. Can we all unlock common bond through our power of friendship? Nope. <laughs> seven is one success, Ron. You were one shy. Last round. Uh -oh. Four of clubs. Uh -oh. Oh, no. 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 Benny yeah. to redraw. Yeah. Jack of hearts. Okay. okay much better. Good, better. Good, 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 good. Come on, Ron. Come back to us. All right. Serve your I need, purpose, I need... boy. And open the door for the devourer. Will you do as you promised? Give me a spirit roll at a minus four. Okay. Ace it on the six. Nice. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's... That's a six total. Uh, a can six. I get a piece of extra credit, please? Because that's not enough, success. right? I need two, I believe. That is correct, Ron. A point so, of extra credit. Oh, extra credit. Ron. Come on, come on. As the eye begins to open and you see the giant yellow flesh of it. Aced it again. 
Okay, okay, okay. God damn it! <laughs> no! Okay, using a Benny. A Benny to reroll. Oh, come on. Use another Benny. Another you can Benny. Do it, Ron. To you can do it, you can do it. Another Benny? The Bennies must flow. Aced it on a D6. Yes, 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 yes. Aced it on a D6. There yeah. it is, baby! All right, that's, uh, let's see, that's uh, 13 <sighs> minus 2 is a 11. Ron, as the giant eye opens beneath you and the devourer announces itself, you feel this striking sense of cosmic insignificance. Oh. You are able to hold on to yourself and not speak the words that the devourer compels you to speak. Instead, Ron to Goth Stevens, you have your free will to make a choice. This world, this world isn't ready. You would not be served well. I awaken, boy. I hunger. Ron to God is ready. Then if Will you, you open the door? No. And if you try to take this world, I will fight you. Fool! Stand in the way of your own destiny and perish! And as it shouts that, Ron, as you turn down the destiny that you were born and bred to fulfill, you feel whatever force was keeping you aloft in the sky desert you. And you plummet to the ground below. Meanwhile, back in the bunker beneath. That's everyone! Come on! It's now or never! Oh, get out of here, Jackson. We're not leaving without Ron. God damn it, you know that I don't want to leave Ron behind either, but he may be on the other side, even if he ain't. Fuck All right. It. It ain't Look, worth everyone dying. Just, just, just give, give me one more minute. I, I'll, I'll just stick my head back out there. Maybe Ron's right behind. He, he did, maybe he doesn't God know where it. we're going. Just be smart, kids. We'll be back. We'll be back as soon as we can. Just Jackson get to safety. looks at you and looks at the portal, which is still beginning to shrink and flicker. And with a noise of frustration, he dives through it, leaving the three of you alone with a flickering, shrinking portal. What are you going to do? You have moments. You I have moments. a question. Yes. Can I somehow use my blood to help keep this portal open? Your blood has all but been extended, expended, okay. Adelaide. Okay. You have only yourselves. Let's just get, get out there, see if we see them, and then we'll go if we, if we don't. Okay. And I'm, I'm gonna yeah. see if you see him where. Because you're in down the underneath in the, in the particle collider. In order to get back right. into the stadium, you would have to run climb the ladder all the way back up and see if you can spot him in the stadium that is overrun with demons. Okay. Invalidating maybe. the sacrifice that your allies made. Maybe he's just climbing down the ladder. Let's just, let's just yell up the shaft. If we hear him, then he's coming. If not, then we'll go. So we'll run to the elevator and just see if he's there. You guys run to the elevator and stick your heads out into the shaft and call out for Ron. Yeah, yeah. Ron, you up there? Come on, Ron. And you hear nothing but the screeches and cries of demons and the scrabbling of claws on ladders. And you see dark shapes flowing down the elevator shaft above you. And you hear screaming. Screaming mm. getting rapidly closer and screaming that sounds very much like Ron as from behind you, back in the particle collider, you hear a boom as something heavy hits the ground fast and groans go. that sound like Ron. Go, 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 go. You turn yeah. and run back through the room and see Ron picking himself up off the ground, barely able to stand. I and the portal has closed 
to almost only three feet in diameter. I don't I think, think we just, we don't even stop running. Over. We just keep going. Yeah, I think we just yeah. grab, drag him. Run. Grab Ron under his arms and just like toss him out of the portal with us. All yeah. right. So who's grabbing Ron? I am. I'll uh, help. Calvin and Sawyer, can I get a strength roll? Adelaide, what are you doing? I mean, I, I would be, you know what? This is what I actually wanted to do before. I want to go and stick an arm through the portal and see if I can force it to stay open. Uh... All right, uh, Adelaide, you go over and, and stick an arm through the portal, but as you try to, the portal flickers out of existence and your hand touches bare stone for just a moment. Then the portal weakly returns and your hand slides through and you just hear screaming from the other side. Come on, what are you waiting for? It's I closing. Reach my other hand out to them and just grab onto whoever. Whoever will grab my hand. Both first. of them are lifting Ron. So Adelaide, it's go through or help Ron. Well, wait. That is Adelaide, what I'm trying to do. I want to make Adelaide it change. go through and then pull us in? I want to make it. I was going to tell the people on the other side to pull. <laughs> OK. All right. I see what you're doing. So you tell them to pull. Uh, and Adelaide, you're going to wait for right now. Um, can I get yeah. a strength roll from both Calvin and Sawyer? Yeah. OK. I need a reroll. Uh, reroll for Sawyer. I'm going to use a Benny. Benny for Calvin. Okay, I got a four. A four, which is a success. I got an ace. Uh, I got a seven. All right, both successes. You managed to lift Ron up, and both of you, you put his arms around your shoulders and start hobbling over towards Adelaide. So the order is going to be Adelaide, Sawyer, Ron. Calvin. Fair? Yeah. Fair. Adelaide, you stuff your arm through and shout it out, pull. And as you say that, you feel hands grab onto your arm from the other side of the portal as you reach out your hands and grasp at Sawyer's. Just as you make contact, you feel yourself being yanked through the other side. This was going to be an athletics roll at a minus two to jump through the portal with the assistance of your friends from the other side, it is a straight athletics roll. Adelaide, make your roll. Come on, Eddie. Uh, can I get a reroll? You can. Because I'm still at my minus two for my wound and fatigue, right? Yes. Okay, I aced it. Nice, nice. Oh, that's a five. A five is a success. Adelaide, you feel yourself being yanked through the portal as you pull as hard as you can on Sawyer's arm, you find yourself stumbling into the underground bunker of the Sweetheart Foundation and see friendly faces around you. Sawyer, you're up next with the assistance from Adelaide. Okay. It is just an athletics roll with no negative. How, oh, sorry, Jordy roll? Yes. You are supporting Ron. So it will be a minus one for that. Okay, all right. Okay, I rolled a six, I, so it aced. Uh, a five. So that's a nine, that's a seven. A seven, that is a success. Yes. You feel yourself being pulled through by Adelaide and you desperately try and hold on for Ron, to Ron as you feel the disorientation of moving through the portal and you two come out the other side. Keep resting. rolling everybody. Ron, you took quite a hit. Uh, you, are going to be making this athletics roll at a minus four, but you get the plus two from Sawyer, so a minus two altogether. Minus two altogether? Yes. Uh, that's cocked. Doesn't matter. Uh, that's a four. Four is a success, Ron, as you stumble through. Now it's just the momentum of all of you being pulled through. You too make it to the other end of the portal. Calvin, you were helping Ron. You still are off balance as he goes through trying to make sure he makes it in. Can I get an athletics roll at a minus one? Yes. That's a five. Five is a success. 
Cal. Woo! We made it. We're all out. And with one last burst, as you look back and see demons pouring out of the elevator door and just rushing down towards the hallway you're at, you make it through the portal and out the other side. Holy shit, they made it. Oh my God, they're all here. And everyone in the room cheers. <coughs> oh everyone, everyone that is, except for Helen, who sits in the middle of the, of the pentagram, her hair gone completely white, her flesh aged and wrinkled. She is so enfeebled looking and she just sits there in the middle of the pentagram. I think, I think going out on Friday would be lovely, Jack. I think that that sounds like a great way to start a weekend. I didn't know you cared. Can I go over to her and take my locket off and give it to her? You walk over to her and as you do, Glenn Mac comes up to your side The strain, I think, was too much for her. Sorry, Glenn Mack. No, I, I think in some way, it, it sounds like she's back before with her friends. I think this might be a kindness of a sort. And as you hang the locket around Helen's neck, she just sort of smiles absently and wraps her hand around it and just caresses it lightly with her thumb as she continues to murmur and mumble to people who aren't there. And Glenn Mac turns and looks at you, all of you. What you've done here, all of you, is beyond comprehension. You have stopped the apocalypse. And it almost would have happened because of me. And Jackson walks up to the front of Glenn Mac and studies him up and down and turns to his side to the silent chupacabra covered in scars and wounds, breathing heavily next to him and says, what do you think, Paul? You think Glenn Mac's being a self-indulgent piece of crap? Because I think Glenn Mac's being a self-indulgent piece of crap. And I think he made the right choice at the end of the day. As far as I'm concerned, we're okay. Now, I believe, unless I'm much mistaken, some of you got a graduation to attend to. So what do you say we get back upstairs and finish off this thing? Oh, yeah. God, that oh my sounds God. awful. We, we, we've got to check on our families, right? Is, is Ron okay, though? He fell from the sky or some shit. Uh, <laughs> yeah, what happened? I... Let's... Let's enjoy the win right now. We can talk about what happened later. Okay, buddy. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right, let me help you. Let me help you out of here, man. Let's, let's get the fuck out of here. You make your way out of the Sweetheart Foundation bunker and up to the stadium above, where already streams of happy people are leaving the stadium, diplomas in hand. And as the crowd of people starts to stream up the exits past you, you see uh, some familiar faces. Barrett looks over. Yo, where the hell were you guys? Oh my gosh, you missed, there was like some awesome like special effects light show. It was really, really cool. And then, you know, we all graduated. So that's pretty awesome. So uh, yeah, we're partying after this, right? We're, we're partying, but he's being pushed along by the throngs of people. And behind him- We're comes, definitely partying. Behind we're him comes Dennis. And Dennis is walking up behind Barrett with a curious expression on his face. And he looks over at the four of you. 
That wasn't um, that wasn't special effects, was it? Oh yeah, no, it was. Yeah, sure. I don't yeah, man. So yeah, no fireworks or some shit, you know, for the light show. You, I think you know better, Dennis. Yeah. It's good to see you. Congratulations. Hey. Yeah, yeah, you you too, but he too is swept away by the crowd. And, and as you stand there, watching the faces of those that you have spent four years at East Texas University, attending the school, learning, taking tests, and oh yeah, trying to subvert an upcoming demonic apocalypse. The weight of everything that has happened crashes in on you. And from the other side of the throngs of people, an elderly man toddles over with some cases, four, four cylindrical cases wrapped underneath his arm, wearing his robes and his tasseled hat, indicating that he is the president of the university. President Nelson walks over. Uh, excellent job, Adelaide, Sawyer, Ron, and Calvin. And he looks around and unzips the top of his robe and pulls part of it aside, revealing pinned to the front of his shirt, a small burnished silver circle with a star inside of it and the number seven, just barely visible, engraved in the middle of the star. I think we all owe you quite a debt and I would say that the four of you have earned these. And he hands you each your diplomas. Congratulations, you've graduated. Oh my God, I thought we were gonna die when we graduated. <laughs> and that oh, is where we will end the story. Ah, oh, well done, study group. You stood against the machinations of the Sweetheart Foundation and their allies. You uncovered their plot and you stopped the end of the world from happening. Ugh. On top of all of that, you did not usher in the devourer and you graduated. Woo! So Can I would call more? that a pretty big win. Seriously. Wait. I Everyone, to change my background. Raise your red solo cups or equivalent. We have some last minute shots. <laughs> they have been coming in all throughout this, but we were just trying to finish. Raise them up. Vampire 54 bought us a shot. And now, as we go to hell, a draw for us all. And the evens shall win us all. <laughs> Set them up and chug. Doug. Doug. Mellow Wolf bought us a shot. Seriously, guys, Mellow thank Wolf. you for telling no one. Rick Bear bought us a shot. Godspeed, Rick study. Bear. It's been a hell of a journey. See you on the other side. Also, <laughs> Freya says hi. Hi, oh, hi, hi Shug, Shug, Shug. Rick Bear. Uh, Thank you. Guess I'm Salad bought us a shot. Series finale. Can't be here live, but love you all. Raise them up <laughs> and chug. Guess I'm Salad. JN3 Storyteller. A fond farewell to my favorite study group. I wish my time at Sam Houston State had been half as interesting as this. <laughs> Maybe with a bit less bloodshed. Regardless, <laughs> whatever comes next, I'm in. Raise them up and chug. chug. Thank you very much to JN3 Storyteller for that. Savage Riggs bought us a shot. Addy brings the mojo sublime. Ron brings the demigodly might. Sawyer brings the flaming justice. And Calvin shooting straight this time. When all hope <laughs> is lost, the study group comes through. Because when all said and done, Evil can still be crossed. Raise them up and chug. Yeah. Thank you, Savage Riggs. Owen oh, Lean, they made it to the finale. Nothing could stop them. Not an earthquake, nor a pandemic, nothing. To the wild cards, to ETU, to saving throw. Shots. Raise them up and chug. Chug. Enter the rectangle. To the show that's worth getting up at 4 a.m. for. Thanks Aww. for the ride, guys. <laughs> Raise them up and chug. Yeah. chug. That's amazing. Yeah. Vampire 54. I mean, every time we are in a hellscape, there is always something of bones and teeth. Should we be concerned for our martial <laughs> team slash the one who runs things? 
Frog. Raise them up and chug. 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 The littlest in a bun. Uh. I love y'all. <laughs> Raise them up and chug. Chug. Thank you. Thrithlin. To the heroes who saved the world and the heroes who kept a handle on their frustration. Gunbot, <laughs> wild cards. Gunbot. Raise them up and chug. 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 Escape Box Ted, to endings and new beginnings, to hitching days and sick days, and to getting the show a new streaming computer. Raise <laughs> oh, up yeah. and chug. Yeah. Chug, I'll drink to that. <laughs> Noisily weeping taco, just wow. Raise <laughs> him up and chug. chug. And Savage Clint, great finale. Hope this helped you get a new computer, Dom. Raise <laughs> him up and chug. chug. Thank you. To all of you in the Alumni Association, this show and this university, these students and this dean would not be what they are without your presence and your support. It is because of you we do this, and it's because of you we can do this. So thank you very much for being here week after week and supporting the show and the channel. It means the world to us. To the four of you, Thank you for being here week after week and for putting in all of the effort that you do behind the scenes and on screen to make this show what it is and as great as it is. I could not be luckier to have the four of you at my Aww. table as players. So thank you very much for this. And thank, thank you. you. And yeah, thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. An awesome hey, it is, it is my absolute pleasure. Aww. Thank you to Pinnacle. Thank you to Ed Wetterman, Preston DuBose, and all the other people who are responsible for East Texas University. Thank you to everyone. We are so very glad that we could share this with you all the way to the end. And next Friday at 8 p.m. Pacific time, we will be doing our final By the Bonfire chat back, discussing all the things that you want to know, <laughs> the burning questions you need answered, the discussion points that we want to talk about, and maybe, just maybe a little bit of an epilogue for each of our study group members to find out and to see what we will be doing next season on Wild Cards. You will have to join us next Friday at 8 p.m. Pacific time on twitch.tv slash saving throw show. Also tune in on Sunday at 6 p.m. for the second part, the finales of our Deadlands Lawless right Game here. to support the Kickstarter going on currently for Savage Worlds Deadlands campaign setting if you like what we do here if you like savage worlds or you're at all interested in it i guarantee you you will love deadlands there is so much to enjoy check out the kickstarter it's a long night it's been a long show it's been a long campaign i think here is a good time to leave you all thank you again to the alumni thank you to the players thank you and thank uh you. We're still having Twitter problems, obviously, but you can follow Wild Cards RPG on Instagram and you can use the hashtag Wild Cards RPG on all social networks to keep track. Don't forget mm -hmm. about that. One last time, students, faculty, staff, friends and alumni. Go Ravens! <laughs> 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 <laughs>